call this meeting on the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources joined with the Committee on Tourism, Committee on Finance, Committee on Local Government to order. And uh, this is with regards to our update uh, in the rehabilitation of Boracay. And at the same time, to clarify what uh, the Department of Agrarian Reform are saying on its pronouncing announcements on land reform in Boracay. And at the same time, we have to tackle the bill of uh, Senator Franklin Drillon uh, about the creation of uh, the Boracay administration. So uh, since this is a continuing uh, hearing from last time, we don't need a quorum even if we don't have any <laughs> senators open. So we will uh, start with the meeting with the hearing and I wish to acknowledge our resource persons uh, from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Yusek Benny Antiporda, Yusek Ernesto Adobo, Yusek Juan Miguel Cuna. Okay. Okay. And from the uh, uh, Biodiversity Management Bureau, Senior Ecosystem Management Specialist, Ms. Joy Navarro. Okay, where is she? And from uh, National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, Namria Deputy Administrator, Mr. Jose Cabanayan, Jr. Cabanayan. Okay. Kabanayan, okay. And from the Department of Tourism, we have Yusek Art Boncato, Jr., okay, okay. And the uh, Regional Director of Region 6, Attorney Helen Catalbas, okay. And Assistant Chief Operating Officer of CHESA, Engineer Nestor Dumalanta, okay. And the uh, Chief of Regulatory of of CHESA, Mr. Darren Fernandez, and uh, uh, OIC Ch Chief Operating Officer, Tourism Promotions Board, Mr. Arnold T. Gonzalez. Okay. From the Department of Interior and Local Government, we have Undersecretary Epimaco Densing III, okay. and Police Chief Inspector Dennis R. Gabihan, Legal Officer, detailed with the Metro Boracay Police Task Force, Philippine National Police, Police Regional Office, uh, Region 6, Nasampu. Okay, thank you. And from the Department of Agrarian Reform, wala ba? Dapat uh, <laughs> And uh, from Department of Justice, ASEC Serio Yap III. And uh, Deputy Administrator Robert Nomar Lerentana, Land Registration Authority, LRA. Okay, nasaan? Okay. And from the Department of Public Works and Highways, Under Secretary Roberto Bernardo. Okay. And, uh, okay. and the Regional Director, Wenceslao Leano Jr., Deep. PWH Region 6 Na, from Dole Asek Choni Aragon Aragon okay Georgie Aragon and from the Philippine Institute of Environmental Planning Mr. Mark Evidente Thank you. and uh, from the Climate Change Commission Commissioner Rachel Ansibugan Herrera okay, Climate Change from the provincial government of Aklan, Governor Miraflores, thank you. Vice Governor Rick Rinaldo Kimpo, okay, nandito ba? Wala, wala, wala pa. Uh, ano, represented by Mr. S.L. Flores, board member, Western District of Aklan, okay. Municipality of Malay, Mayor Ciceron Kawaling, okay. Vice Mayor Abram Lumbo Sualog, 
Okay. Uh, Municipal Planning and Development Officer, Mr. Ms. Alma Belejerdo, okay, and uh, LGU Malay, Ms. Gemma Teresa Mateo, okay, and Municipal Engineer, Engineer Building Official Engineer Eliezer Kasidsid, okay, okay, from the Academ, NGOs and stakehold stakeholders. Uh, Dr. Wilfredo Licuanan, Director, uh, Alfred Shee's Ocean Research Center, De La Salle University, okay. And uh, from Boracay to be System Inc., Mr. Jonathan Cabrera, okay. And from uh, the private sector, Don, Don, Dr. Henry Chusoy, uh, ah, okay, thank you. And, uh, uh, Chairman of the Boracay Foundation, President uh, of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Boracay, Ms. Elena Brugger, and uh, Mr. Jude Adiaton, Vice Corporate Secretary, okay. and President of the Tourism Congress of the Philippines, Mr. Jose Clemente III, and, okay. and from uh, Vice President of Oceana Philippines, Ms. Gloria Estenso Ramos, okay, and uh, represent, uh, Ocean and Political Campaigner of Greenpeace Philippines, Mr. V. Sinches. So we welcome all of you in the Senate and uh, Today's proceeding is our second hearing and a continuation of the hearing conducted on March 2, 2018 on the proposed Senate Resolutions number 313, 393, 633, 640, 14, and 646 in relation to Senate Bill 327, 423, 471, 593, and 1687. In brief, these legislative measures direct this committee to look into the pressing environmental issues that significantly contribute to the deteriorating ecological condition of Boracay and threaten its position as a prime tourist destination in the country, with the end in view that we could formulate appropriate policies and strategic courses of action for the protection and sustainable development of the island. Island. We are likewise considering in our proceeding today Senate Bill number 1756 on the creation of the Boracay Development Council filed by Senator Drillon on March 18, 2018 and referred to this committee. At this point, let me provide you with the highlights of the first hearing held in Boracay on March 2, 2018. During our first meeting, I was joined by Senator Nancy Binay, the chairperson on the Committee on Tourism and Cultural Communities, Senator Lauren Legarda, the chairperson of the Committee on Finance and Climate Change, Senator Mick Subiri, who is then the chairman of the Committee of Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, and now our majority floor leader, and Senator Joel Villanueva, chairman of the Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development. Officials from the government agencies concerned, particularly the DNR, DOT, the ILG, TIESA, the province of Aklan, the municipality of Malay, and its three barangays were present. The stakeholders from the communities and business sector in Boracay are likewise in attendance. DNR Secretary Roy Sumatu made a presentation on the environmental problem besetting Boracay and stated that the priority concerns of DNR are the compliance of all Boracay establishment to the Clean Water Act and for the recovery and restoration of the five out of the nine original wetlands in Boracay, 
He also said that he has directed the Boracay Island Water Company, one of the two water concessioners in Boracay, to repair and rehabilitate its two sewerage treatment plants that already existed, uh, exceeded the capacity, causing leakage of wastewater from burst pipes. To this, I made recommendation for the delineation of the jurisdiction of the two water providers in the island, the Boracay Water and the Boracay Tubi System, for both to have clear areas of responsibility uh, as what is being adopted in Metro Manila, where the areas of the responsibilities of the two water concessionaires, Manilad and Manila Water, are clearly delineated. Mr. Tab Valentin Talavero, the provincial, the Penro of Aklan, stated that an inventory of 842 settlers are, li are living within the forest zone of Boracay Island with either temporary or permanent structures. He further named the Seven Seas Resort and Hotel, the D Mall, Kingfisher Hotel and Resort, as some of the establishments that are encroaching on wetland. He was then instructed to submit the list of occupants in the forest land and wetlands in Boracay. During the hearing, the illegal building of st structures on top of old rock formation by Boracay West Coast was tackled, and we learned that such resort is operating without a building permit and a business permit to operate from the LGU of Malay, nor a forest land use agreement for tourism purposes from the DNR. Malay, Malay, Malay Mayor Kawaling stated that he already issued an order for the demolition of the structures of Boracay West Cove. Uh, we recognize uh, the presence of Senator Sani Trillanes. Would you like, I will finish this and you can make a comment. Thereafter, a discussion ensued on the procedures being undertaken for the issuance of DNR EMB of ECC to establish in Boracay, and records show that a great number of establishments in Boracay operate without the required ECC. It, Engineer Metedio Torbelia, the director of DNR and EMB, stated that several notices of violations were already issued. To this, Secretary Simato acknowledged that one of the weakest links of the NR is enforcement of environmental laws and to remedy the situation. He has restructured the NR's organization and hired lawyers to strengthen the enforcement capabilities of Boracay. Particularly, he has assigned a lawyer in Senro of Boracay to assist in enforcement of environmental laws. I suggested for DNR to create an enforcement bureau within the department instead that will be directly reporting to the DNR secretary, while Senator Lauren Ligarda recommended that a memorandum of agreement among DNR, DILG, and the Office of the Environmental Ombudsman be formulated for the enforcement of the three environmental laws. Secretario An Secretary Año of DILG stated that DILG and DNR are already coordinating with respect to the enforcement of environmental laws, but they welcome the suggestion of the Senator. On the part of this business sector, Ms. Elena Brugger, the President of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Boracay, Mr. Jose Clemente, President of the Tourism Congress of the Philippines, and Ms. Nanette Graf, the President of the Boracay Foundation, Inc., expressed their views on Boracay's closure, stated their cooperation for the rehabilitation of Boracay, and gave their respective recommendation to solve the environmental problem of Boracay. One of these noteworthy recommendations is for the environmental fees being charged to visitors in the island be actually flowed back into preserving the environment, uh, environment. Extrapolating from statistics in 2017, revenues from the environmental fees is more than 100 million pesos. 
This amount can greatly enhance the effort to preserve Boracay and enforce environmental laws. Ms. Graff had the occasion to issue the specific request that the land classification of Baracay be subjected to existing vested rights through the land title or through the payment of tax declaration since 95 up to present. On the other hand, Sister Maria Perla Balbastro of the Holy Rosary Parish, Boracay, appealed for the welfare of the common and poor folks of Boracay in any decision to be made regard regarding the fate of Boracay. A clan governor, Florencio Miraflores, brought up the problem of drainage system in the island, which is the responsibility of TIESA. Likewise, the need to solve the problem of sewage treatment was discussed. In order to avoid confusion and negligence of responsibility, I again suggested a clear delineation of areas to be serviced by the two water concessionaires in the island with respect to the provision of water and sewage treatment. On the part of the solid waste management being practiced in Boracay, I made the observation that the system of bringing out all the Boracay waste to the mainland is not in compliance with the provision of the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2003, which mandates recycling of biodegradable and recyclable waste. Only those residual waste comprising about 20% of the waste generated should be brought out of Boracay. In this connection, just days after the March 2 hearing, I sent a composting facility to the LGU of Malay to help in recycling of Boracay waste. I hope DNR will fast track the provision of more composting facilities in Boracay and uh, uh, what you call this, uh, w uh, plastic recycling factory in Boracay because we have a budget for it in the budget of DNR. I wish to remind you that that budget has been there for almost three years and you are not acting on it. So I hope you will act on it. It was supposed to be given to all the LGUs of surrounding Manila Bay, but it's more than the budget can still buy something for Boracay. So we might as well give something to Boracay to help them recycle their waste. On other hand, in solving the problem of growing illegal settlements in Boracay, I proposed the building by NHA of Locos Housing at a relocation site on the mainland for the informal settlers that are needed to be brought out of Boracay. And Secretary Simato mentioned they have pinpointed a piece of land outside the main, in the mainland to become the relocation site of those informal settlers that we are going to remove from Boracay. Senator Villanueva, for his part, pitched that Boracay needs a sustainable technology and infrastructure in order to support the island's carrying capacity that has been abused. While Senator Ligarda stressed the importance of compliance with the ecological solid waste management law and the clean I think it's Clean Water Act, not Clean Air Act. And narrated best practices examples of clients with this law. In the course of the hearing, the committee asked for the submission of the following data from the government agencies concerned, list of compliant and non-compliant establishments. Were you able to submit that, DNR? The wetland data. What are the nine wetlands in Boracay? Where are these nine wetlands located? Who are now occupying these wetlands? Who are responsible? Who are the DNR, RDs, PENRO, SENRO, and LG official at the time of the encroachment? Do you have that? Nasaan? Dito. 
the record of the cease and desist orders issued by DNR. Do you have a record? Nasaan yun? Eh, para, ano? Wala daw yun. We will check. Ilagay mo dito um, yung nasubmit. No? Nasaan yun? Can we ask the, who are responsible for this? Yusek Adobo. Can we hear from you? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Um, I don't believe we have issued a CDO, but uh, we have served notices of violation in Shoko's orders, and those were, su those were submitted to the committee, ma'am. Right now, the violation on water code are still with still pending with the PAM. We're deliberating on them. Pollution Education Board. Um, what is the PAM? Pollution explain to ad us. Pollution Education Board, um, oh. Madam Chair. Yeah. Na still there. Nandun yung order? Nandun po yung mga kaso. Uh, oh. Oh. Still being deliberated by the board, and then we have only six months. Yeah. Di ba dapat emergency na yan, dapat magawa na yan lahat. Ano ang timetable niyo dyan? Uh, we wish to recognize Senator Drillon. Uh, would you like to say something before we go on with this? I'm just asking them yung requirement na pinasubmit namin sa kanila. Uh, what are submitted and what are not submitted. So they have submitted the list of compliant and non-compliant establishment, uh, the wetland, list of wetland who are occupying this wetland and who are responsible for this. Yung wala sila nung record of cease and desist or the order issued by DNR. In replacement, we have what? Meron sila notices of violation. Ang kapalit nito, notices of violation. Pag ganito ba, pag nagbigay ka ng notices of violation at hindi pa rin sila uh, sumunod, ano gagawin mo? Ano ba yung process na gagawin nyo? So we will have a clear understanding of how will this go from here. Ma'am, Madam Chairman, if I may. Ma'am, uh, when a notice of violation is issued, the... Uh, Parties are called to a technical conference at the regional level. And uh, after the discussion on uh, their supposed violations, if warranted, this will be uh, elevated to the Pollution Adjudication Board in the central office for... Meron na po from the regional offices. May mga napadala na po. Adjudication... Board, ma'am. Oh, ngayon... And so, nandun pa? Yes, ma'am. Gano'ng katagal to doon? Um, well, uh, medyo marami po siya. So, did he discuss? There were a few that were deliberated oh, when already. When do you help to finish this? Dito sa Pollution and Adjudication Board. Um, as soon as possible, ma'am. Hindi uh, pwede yung ASAP. Give opo. me a date. Uh, ma'am, siguro... Kasi ASAP can be forever. Uh, Ma'am, we, maybe we can finish it within a, within a month, within okay. one month. Yes, one month. After that, what happened? Uh, the uh, appropriate penalties will be imposed. So on, penalties uh, will be imposed. Yeah, most, ano mostly and Ma uh, under the uh, Clean Water Act, uh, the range of penalties uh, starts with a minimum of 10,000 to 200,000 a day as per the Clean Water Act. 10,000. To 200,000 a day, depending on the gravity of the offense, ma'am. 200,000 per day. Yes, ma'am. So, after one month, we can go back to you, and we will know sino yung nabigyan ng, yes, ano, ng penalties na Opo. of all of them. Yes, ma'am. Ilan ba yung nasa Pollution and Adjudication Board? Ilan yung nakaso na naandun na I uh, will have to get the exact number, oh. ma'am. Can you please call them and ask them so yes, we will know? Kung sino yung magka-penalties, we will know kung 100 yun, sampu na, na penalized, di ba? We yes, have to yes, have an idea. Can you call them yes, and tell us how many are cases are in the pollution 
and adjudication board. Oh, can you give? Can you can you get that figure? So uh, another one is the record of those stated eight eight hundred forty two entities uh, living existing within the foreign zone of Boracay. What happened to these eight hundred forty two entities? Some of them, um, especially those that are occupying within so the we, territory we of... So we divide. Sabihin mo sa akin, iba dito, yeah, families, iba dito, establishment. How many establishment and how many families? Um, do we have a different... different so we will different. have an idea. Um, uh, yes. This is the universe, ma'am. 800. In fact, it's 842 ang universe. It's, Some, it's, ilan ang residential, ilan ang commercial. Diba? Dapat yun, ganun. Diba? We will do the disaggregation, ma'am. It, it, oh, the number is already 885. Oh, 885. Okay. And may, may I correct commercial my... Commercial and residential, diba? O, oh, ilan ang commercial, ilan ang residential? Gagawin namin, ma'am. Ma, uh, uh, mabibigay nyo ngayon just okay. a rough idea out of 585 rough rough idea ilan ang yeah. residential ilan ang commercial para okay. meron okay. kayong mastery of your problem di ba? you should have an idea okay uh, roughly ma'am uh, a little over 500 are residential uh -huh. and the rest would be Commercial. So, Different 500 sizes. ang residential, 385 ang commercial, okay? And, uh, paano gagawin nyo dito? Yung inuna po namin i-demolish, um, if you have already been demolished, uh, those that occupy um, within the periphery of the wetlands, meron na pong ilan na? Demolish is how many? 18? Sampu daw, ma'am, as of yesterday. Sampung so, ano, residential or commercial? Structure po. Uh, Hindi, whether commercial. they are residential or commercial. Um, they, they were mostly being operated as boarding houses. The commercial? Uh, yes po, yes po. Then commercial. Okay. Wala na, yun lang ang debolish nyo out of 885. Uh, ongoing po, ma'am, ang demolition. So you have demolished 10 out of 885. Okay, uh, we have to be sure. What are you doing? A oh, list of homes and establishment without wastewater treatment facility or connection. Ilan yan? Um, we have the numbers, but uh, okay, can you provide number? We, we number. Alam nyo ginagawa nyo. You have to have the numbers. Yeah. Uh, siguro ma'am, the BIWC can give the number. Oh, can you give the number? Boracay Water Company. Bakit Boracay Water Company? Eh, dalawa sila. Oh. Bakit Boracay Water? Boracay Water na ba? Wala na yung 2B Water? 2B, 2B ba yun? 2B Water? Oh, ang, oh, let's hear from Boracay Water. Ilan yung mga list of homes? Na-divide na ba? Your Honor, uh, may I just oh, give you from the perspective of... Uh, oh, let's... let's talk about this. Na-divide na ba yung Boracay? Kasi uh, si pwede no. yung you are all over the place. Hindi malamang kung sino responsible. I told you to divide Boracay between Boracay water and to be water. Were you able to divide the place? Uh, no, Your Honor. Oh. Nasaan ang Chesa? Nagtago na yata Chese. Oh. Ang dumating dito eh. Ano ba to? Oh. oh, ano ginawa nyo doon sa water? Dinivide nyo ba o ganun pa din? Morning, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, yung pagbigay ng service area mm. is incumbent upon NWRB. Uh, Who is that? National Water Resources Board. So, they were given permits to operate for the entire island. Magdalawa sila? Yes, ma'am. National Water Resources water Board. Res under kanino to? DNR. National Water Resource Resources Board. Oh, ngayon, oh, DNR daw to. Sila magdi-divide. Oh, ano ginawa nyo? Kasi how can you improve yung wastewater kung yung mag -i implement ng wastewater facility confuse where they're supposed to operate? How do you 
How do you propose to solve this? Kanino ba to under? Kaninong USEC to? National Water Resources Board. It is an attached agency of the department, ma'am. Oh, uh, ngayon. Sino ngayon um, ang, ano, ibig mong sabihin, nobody can tell them what to do from DNR? The, the, the current situation is BIWC has a... BIWC. Buracay. Oh, BI. BIWC. Oh. Has an existing contract with TIESA. Uh, oh. it's, it's actually a joint venture. Oh. And that contract covers the entire island. Eh, pero may tubi water yun before they yeah. come in eh. Bakit hindi nila niresolve yung problem ng tubi? Kasi you have to face it. Hindi pwede yun. Eh, kasi dito sa Metro Manila, uh, may dalawa kaming water supplier. Pero dinelinate kung saan. Yung uh, west and south of Metro Manila, is uh, Manila and east and north of Metro Manila is uh, uh, Manila water. So, malinaw. Pag may problema, alam mo kung sino si CCN. Eh, pero kung dalawa yung water company na inter interlapping, eh, sino si CCN natin pag may problema? And how do they plan? Oh, eh, problema, ibinigay nyo sa Boracay water, hindi nyo dinispad sa yung tubi water. Pwede ba may dalawang water supplier na 1,000 hectares? Alam mo, 1,000 hectares is just a subdivision in Las Piñas. Oh, yung tinitirang kong subdivision, 1,000 hectares yun. Oh, binigay nyo pa sa two water supplier. Hindi <laughs> nagkagulo. Hindi nyo pala kayang alsin yung tubi. Ba't nyo binigay sa Boracay water? I think Tiesa would be in a position to answer that. Chesa? Hindi, you cannot solve the problem of wastewater. Ideally, yes. The island should have been divided if the island has to have two concessionaires. Yes. But the two concessionaires has different system. The other one, 2B, is doing a subtage management. So, siguro... Miski sila dalawang system kung yung area na o-operate nila maliwanag, they can operate under the two system na, na merong area na kanya. Yung isa, magsiseptage. Yung isa, magsisewer. O, walang problema doon. Basta ba gawin mo efficiently yung ginagawa mo, eh, walang problema doon. And then, pag merong, ano, merong wala, hindi ayos ang wastewater, may sisisihin tayo. Ngayon, sino sisisihin natin? Oh. So, forever na na ganito to? Na hindi nyo mariresolve ito? Yes? Uh, good morning, uh, Senators. Uh, I sit in the board of TSA rep representing mm. the DALG. Mm. Mm. In the last, uh, I remember in the last board meeting that we had, uh, the TSA board resolved that uh, TSA will assert uh, its authority over all utilities in Boracay Island specifically. What will happen po, kasi I think there was already a case filed by uh, NWRB that they should be the one uh, uh, having authority in the water systems or resource in Boracay Island. And because of the new law... Uh, ah, so may existing siyang dinatnan eh. Opo, yun opo. Yun ang problema. Na existing. Una, una yung tubig so water, with that resolution... Tapos nagpasok siya ng bagong, bagong supplier. Eh, paano ngayon ang gagawin mo? Kaya mong paalisin yung tubig water? Eh, uh, nauna siya eh. There was already oh. a DOJ... Uh, opinion up mm. to the uh, it's now being appealed with the office of the president mm. that uh, NWRB appealing that they should be the one handling the water system. But they came second. Apo. Kung so ako yung may-ari ng tubi water, magagalit ako. So as of last uh, ano yan, board palakasan? meeting. Ano yan? Palakasan? Si Tiesa po uh, nag-a-assert. Yun po ang uh, huling meeting. Eh, I don't know what's right now. Water supplier doon before. Di magko-court case kayo niyan. Ba't hindi nyo nalang bigyan ng area sila para tapos na problema natin? Di ba? Kasi, if I am to be water, I will file a case. Nauna ako eh. Inalis nyo ako eh. Sana nag-court kayo na bakit nyo ako inalis. Ba't nyo basta pinaltan? Ako nga ako. Oh, hindi ganun ang practice natin dito sa bansa natin. You, you don't displace anybody without a reason. Oh. Ako, tingin ko magkaka-court case yan kasi yung, tub, yung Boracay water is owned by the Ayalas, di ba? 
and Tubi Water is owned by Lucio Tan. Oo. Oo. Ibig mong sabihin, papayag si Lucio Tan na itapon siya doon. O, ikaw, tatanungin ko ita. Kung ikaw si Lucio Tan, papayag ka? Nauna ka? Ano? Ma'am, pang ano yata, parang na-renew. Ni-renew po yata ng NWRB ang franchise ng buhat ito. Ako, kung ako kayo, kinausap nyo na, hinati nyo na. Para walang problema. Kasi you will be involved in a very long court case there. Oh, kasi parehong may ari, parehong may capability to file a case against you, di ba? Oh. So you have to settle that. Oh, ano ang Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, actually what you're saying is the ideal setup no. Kasi the Supreme Court has ruled that there is no exclusivity on water. So ano okay. tayong problema doon, pero you alam mo, ang water supplier is the one in charge of wastewater. Kung water lang yan, wala tayong problema. But the problem of Boracay is the wastewater. In, in our system, pag ikaw ang in charge ng water, you also take care of the wastewater. Yung problema yung wastewater. Sino ngayon ang sisisihin natin? Eh, ang major failure ng Boracay is the wastewater. ba? Diba? Yun yung pumupunta sa dagat at nagpopolyot ng dagat. So, walang exclusivity. Pero hindi pwede kayong nag all over the place kayo, walang sense of responsibility. ba? Diba? Hindi pwede yun. Kaya nung nauna ang hearing natin, sinabi ko sa inyo, kausapin nyo na at i-divide nyo na. ba? Diba? Amicably para yung area niya, siyang, pag nagkagulo doon, siya responsible doon. At yung area niya, pag may problema doon, siya responsible doon. Eh ngayon, Who's going to take care of the wastewater problem? And who's going to implement the Clean Water Act kung yung dalawang ano nyo ay hindi nyo inaayos? Yung dalawang water supplier nyo. Yes? Ma'am, once ma-resolve siya na yung nabanggit ni Yusek Densing sa Office of the President, Ma'am, I, I think regulation can come in to help. Kasi Sino? Ano yung resolve ng Office of the President? Ma Pipili po. siya between Manila Water and Boracay Water? No, ma'am. O Boracay Water and Tubi Water? No, ma'am. Kung sino yung regulatory body ron sa island on the water and sewerage? Ma'am, because for now nga, there are two bodies claiming. One is uh, TESA, the other one is NWRB. But, ibig uh, nyo sabihan, but both of them are part, ibig nyo sabihan, hindi nyo pa masetal yon. Hindi pa kayo magka-settle doon para ma-proceed na natin. How can we solve the water, wastewater problem without settling the issues? Hindi ko ma-imagine na masisettle natin ang issue without solving yung inyong water supplier. Ma'am, if I may. Yes. Uh, kasama po sa napag-usapan sa board ng Chiesa is really to resolve the issue between BIWC and... Ang Chiesa is a biased party. They joint venture with... Boracay Water. Kasama. How can they now decide who will remain? Of course, they will ask Boracay Water to remain because they're joint venture partner of Boracay Water. But do you think to be water will allow that? Madam Senator, Na hindi I, sila sa Madam inyo. Senator, I also suggested that uh, TSA divest its, uh, its ownership. It's, I think, 20% ownership with BIWC. Ang naging issue na lang po sa Office of the President is sino talaga ang regulatory body uh, whether it's TSA or NWRB, once it's resolved, we can already start talking to both uh, inst business establishments on paano hahatiin. And again, uh, we repeat that we made a uh, suggestion, resolution, that we divest ownership or TSA divest ownership from Boracay Water. So, when do you think the decision on who will uh, mediate between 2B Water and Boracay Water will come? We have only six months, and the major problem of Boracay is wastewater. If you cannot decide this, how can you solve the wastewater problem? Maybe, ma'am, what we'll do is, uh, via TSA, we'll write the Office of the President for them to immediately okay. resolve the issue. Uh, Nag-appeal kasi si NWRB after uh, madesisyonan ng DOJ to an opinion uh, that it should be TSA who should be uh, the regulatory body in Boracay Island. Uh, we, but you don't have a list of homes and establishment without wastewater treatment facility or connection. You don't? Ha? Huh? Wala kayong listahan? Eh, yun ang pinakamabigat na problema nyo, wastewater. Do you have a list? Your Honor, I can only speak for, on behalf of uh, Boracay Island Water Company, 
uh, I have a, uh, a data here uh, between commercial and residential. Uh, to date, as we speak, I have more or less 1,800 commercial accounts. Of these 1,800 commercial accounts, only f only 51% of them are connected to the sewer system. For the residential side, of which I have 4,300, only 5% are connected to the sewer system. That's your uh, a list, and that covers the entire Boracay. Uh, that is correct, Your Honor. Okay. Now, yung Tubi Water ba has a list? Yung Tubi Water, nasan yung Tubi Water? Hmm. May listahan ba kayo? Ali kayo ho dito. Bakit ka nagtatago? Oh, oh may listahan ka ba rin? B kunin mo yung listahan nila. And then, do you have a list? Oh. Good morning, ma'am. Jonathan Cabrera representing Mr. Molina of Boracay to be. We have already submitted our list to uh, EMB Region 6, ma'am, of all the rest of our clients. Po. Where is Region 6, EMB? Ibigay nyo kami, ba't nyo ba tinatago yung listahan? Ibigay nyo na sa amin, hahanapin din namin yan. We will submit it, ma'am. You will submit it now? No. Oh. So, so uh, when do we, ano? Kasi you have only six months, eh. You will open again. If you cannot resolve this issue, how can you open in six months? This is the very most important issue, di ba? wastewater, di ba? Ito ang pinaka-importante <laughs> sa lahat ng problem ng Boracay. How do you use, how do you take care of your wastewater? Eh kung hindi natin ma-resolve kung sino responsible for taking care of the wastewater, how can we solve this problem? This is very important. More than anything else here. Hindi ko makabit nito. Kasi ang Boracay, Ang appeal niya sa mga tao is the water, di ba? Eh kung walang wastewater treatment at yung mga wastewater pumupunta sa uh, dagat, eh anong klaseng burakay yan, di ba? Okay. Then they, it says here, Senator Binay requested for the land use plan, tourism development plan, or disaster risk reduction plan for Boracay. Uh, are, are there submissions with regards to this? Uh, so, siguro yung mga responsible for this, can you submit kasi uh, para naman na uh, kompleto ang ating uh, ating ano. Uh, uh, do you have any questions, Senator Chilianes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, my first question is, uh, sino bang in charge dito sa buong uh, pagsasara na to? Uh, the whole rehabilitation plan? Who is in charge? If I may answer, Madam Chair. Yeah. Ang, ang in charge po, um, ang chair ng interagency yeah. task force ay DNR po, si Secretary Simato. Okay, DNR. Um, meron ba kayong... Uh, master plan, yung the whole rehabilitation plan? Um, doon po sa ibinaba na executive order, uh -huh. NEDA is tasked to come up with the plan, medium-term rehabilitation okay. plan, Nako. within three months from the issuance of the EO. Eh kaso so sinara nyo na eh. Sinara nyo na yung Boracay eh. Mer meron po, meron din pong... Asan, uh, asan? Uh, we, need, we need the plan, yung... Uh, Yung may gun chart, ano? Yung day one, ano yung gagawin nyo? Kasi ganito yan, ano? Ang uh, supposed to be, we're losing uh, 5 to 10 billion pesos a month. So that would uh, translate to roughly 1.7, uh, uh, 170 million a day. 
So, kada isang araw, hindi pa pala kayo ready eh. Bakit nyo sinara? Uh, anong, anong explanation? Bakit nyo sinara na wala pa pala kayong master plan? Ang, ang, ang master plan po would include the rehabilitation period of six months and the way forward. No? Pero doon, before isinara po, uh, Madam Chair, meron di pong plano. Dahil ang unang issue ay yung quality ng water. <coughs> so, uh, immediately, tinignan namin yung mga, kung sino yung clean water provider, yung kanilang sistema, mm -hmm. at doon po ang unang focus, especially noong DNR. Eh, hindi nyo, in, in, hindi nyo nga alam kung sino, you don't even have a list kung sino yung uh, hindi naka-attach sa uh, sewage, main sewage line just up to this point. Just a matter of compiling the the the, the, the list, uh, your honors. Uh, we, we do have the and, list. And so, ni, yun nga, uh, that, that, that's my question. And for that matter, ano, uh, bago tayo lumalim, Meron bang power to shut down any part of the territory without any national emergency? Kasi you, you're mentioning uh, Sarai, no? So, me meron ba? Uh, can you help Madam us? Chair, if I may. Uh, Senator, first of all, with regard to the plan, there were plans from the very beginning. We are now in the process of consolidating it because Executive Order Number 3 just created Task Force Boracay, which is an interagency committee. So, the plans that we've made Prior to the closure, we will just consolidate, and if the committee will will receive it, we'll we'll submit it right away. The consolidated plans of all areas. That's number one, sir. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Number two, sir, with regard to the closure, yeah. it is our opinion that the the government uh, okay. maybe has the right to close an island, specifically if that specific area is uh, as uh, the government has a proprietary ownership. Okay. Boracay under executive under the. Uh, Supreme Court ruling in October 2008 has declared that uh, aside from the titles prior to this, which is owned by the Tirols, mm -hmm. the rest of the Boracay Island is owned by the Philippine government. So, meron pa rin private property doon? Opo, yung sa okay. So, hindi, uh, just going by your logic, um, ang sa akin dito, may power yung presidente to shut down Boracay. So, ngayon, uh, okay, six months from now, ni pa rin. Tapos, sabi niya, okay, shutdown ulit natin. Hanggang sa trip lang niya na gusto niya isara, pwede. Is that what you're saying? K kasi walang qualification yun eh. May power eh. Di ba? Um, is that a case sa uh, Yusek Densing? Uh, Inuulit ko po, uh, two things. no One is yung island by proprietary ownership ang ating gobyerno. So talagang... But you mentioned may oh. private property siya eh. Opo, opo. Oh, yun po so yung una. Pangalawa, in the interest of public, uh, public safety, public interest, and public health, okay. by virtue of the, gov of the government's police power, they can also do that by okay. virtue of that reason. That's they why, can. sir, the island was declared under a state of calamity. Okay. They can, di ba? So, sige. Uh, let's proceed from that uh, premise. Pero, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, eh, livelihood of uh, thousands of people. Again, sinasabi ko nga, 5 to 10 billion pesos a month ang nawawala. Buti sana kung alam nyo yung gagawin nyo from day one, wala tayong problema. Pero, yung sinasabi nyo plans, those are just words. We're not seeing anything. Sinasabi ko nga, Gantt chart. Yung mga managers, alam yan, when they proceed with the project, day one, eh, alam nila yung gagawin nila. And it should be extensive enough to justify the closure. Dahil, um, ang problema, primarily, as mentioned by Yusek Adobo, is, uh, what's that? The quality of water. Quality of water. Ang tanong dito, can that be corrected without closing the island? Can that be, um, I'd like to ask, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Joseph uh, Michael Santos, who is incidentally is my classmate also, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the problem, as you mentioned, is a lot of the commercial and residential establishments are not uh, connected to the main sewage line. 
So, um, can that be corrected without closing the island? In my own uh, humble opinion, Your Honor, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, okay. It's only that uh, we should require all commercial establishments yeah. to connect to the sewer system and not use the drainage system as their conveyance of wastewater. Okay. So, maliwanag, ano? sila yung may capability. Ano? Ako, as I imagine it, ko, ang problema is yung mga linyang nakadiretso sa, sa, sa dagat dapat nagbigay kayo ng notice sa lahat ng residential and commercial establishments doon na they should show proof that they are connected to the main sewage line. Otherwise, pag hindi nila na-correct yan, in 30 days, pwede nyo silang isara. Uh, I just have one question. Yes, Do they have the complete sewage line na makukonekta? I don't think they have. So, Kahit mo i-require kung hindi. Kasi nga, nagkagulo. Binigay sa two water concessionaires. So, hindi na malaman kung sino ang gagawa ng ano. Oh, so, yung Boracay water, they just do what they want to do. And Tubi water will just do what they want to do. Dapat ang unang order of the day is i-divide sa kanila para may res sense of responsibility yung ano. Pag wala, it's a chaos. Eh, gagawa ng kanyang trabaho yung Tubi, gagawa ng kanyang trabaho yung Boracay, pwede ba yun? Pati yung mga residents, nalilito. Saan ba sila kukonek? Sa Tubi o sa Boracay? Uh, Madam, just quickly lang. Uh, ang main problem is marami hong nakakabit sa, sa drainage system na illegal. That's why part of the program that we did, in the, supposedly from... Kukonek sila do kasi wala silang makukonektahang iba. Minsan po, intentional talaga nilang oh, ano. Maybe, intentional. intentional but but confusing part of it. din kayo. Alam mo, talagang ang mga tao sa Pilipinas, puro pasaway din. Pero kung ang gobyerno, eh hindi rin maayos, lalong nagiging pasaway. Kung maayos yung sistema nyo, at tinuturo nyo kung ano gagawin nila, then pwede nyo nang i-penalize yung mga pasaway. Pero paano nyo i-penalize ngayon eh, kayo rin magulo. Oh. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, So, yung uh, to, be, to be system, yung sa accounts ninyo, alam nyo eh, uh, ako ah, the way I would have approached this, kung yun ang problema talaga, is i-compel yung both to be system and Boracay uh, Water Company, na yung accounts ninyo, lahat ng mga nakaano sa inyo, regardless of the, the uh, area na hindi pa delineated, yung mga accounts nila ma'am, pwede sila ang i-notify that you should be connected to the main sewage line. That... Oh. Doon pa niya doon, nag-connect sa dalawa para sigurado. And which is very expensive. It's very... Okay lang kami kasi kumpanya kami. Paano yung mga local? Yes, ma'am. But... They cannot afford that. Madam, there's a local ordinance that gives option to establishments to connect to the sewage lines that we're having it amended at to make it mandatory. So, well, yun lang eh. Ang sa akin doon, um, kayang gawin yon ng bawat residential, kasi you're talking about 885? Um, po, yung nasa... Okay, ilan, ilan yun lahat? Um, uh, establishments? Uh, 30,000 uh, establishments. Okay. I including the, the residential. Residential, both. Maybe over 30,000. 30,000. Or... So, 30,000. Meron kayong concrete figure na pwede silang i-compel, bibigyan nyo ng mandatory, uh, let's say 30-day period, you have to connect to the main uh, sewage line, either Tubi or uh, Boracay Island Water Company. Otherwise, isasara kayo. Then, wala pang cost sa government kasi it's the private uh, uh, sector kasi sila may kasalanan. Eh. Sana kinunek na without closing the island. Kaya, I'm beginning to question na uh, uh, The 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 real intention for this. If I may clarify, yes, yes. Gani to po. Um, you see, na sabi niyo, those are all in place. No, kaya septage ang system niya. Hindi siya dapat nagdi-discharge ng untreated water. Hindi rin magiging problema sa nya. Yung hindi nakakonekta because of the lack of the facility. Walapayong sewer line na main malayo pa. 
kahit mayroong ordinansa si Mayor na within the radius of 61 meters, wala pa rin silang pagpagkukonektahan. Pero kung ginagawa lang, ang, ang, what really triggered the closure is we tried to, all, all this establishment, to comply with existing regulation. But while we were monitoring the out, uh, outfall, hindi bumababa ng 200,000 <coughs> at sinasabi nila nakakumply sila. na napakaraming nagdi-discharge directly to the drainage. And, and we're and talking of a stretch of... Okay. I, 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 I get your point, uh, sir. No? Pero ang sa akin dito, sana yung violators na yun, yun yung sinaran nyo. Di ba? Para there is an incentive for those who are complying with, with the law. Right? And ang, ang, ngayon nga, okay, as, even assuming everything na sinabi nyo ay uh, justified, ano? Pero the point is, ngayon, two months into the closure, eh, hindi nyo pa nga na-address yung basic regulatory matter eh. Uh, tapos nasa office of the president, the, the same person who ordered this closure na na-delay, eh, just the other day, merong decision na ginawa na lahat ng istamba ay eh, huliin eh. Ganong kalalaking mga decision, eh, itong decision na ito. Di ba, two months... Walang nangyari, even if totoo yung sinasabi nyo, bakit ganon? So in the meantime, yung mga nawala ng trabaho, nawala ng negosyo, what happens to them? Uh, Yusek you Adobo, what, 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 what happens to them, sir? Tulad ng sinabi ni Yusek Densing, sir, lahat ng involved sa rehabilitation ay may kanya-kanyang plano. Pati yung bago isara, yung mga maapektuhan, DSWD and DOLE has planned for that. Lahat ito kinukulate ng NEDA for the, the uh, master plan. But anyway, the, the, the reason that we decided to really, that, that, that so, so that the rehabilitation will not be hampered, is close it temporarily. Dahil nga po, we, we, we did everything. Gumamit pa kami nung, this is before the decision of the closure. Gumamit pa kami nung, uh, what do you call that, colored, pinapa agos namin doon sa mga bawat suspected establishment. And yet, we could not pinpoint kung sino talaga ang source nung. So, the, the only way was when local government also intervened, we decided to open that entire stretch ng main pipeline, ng drainage. Mm -hmm. And that would necessitate temporary closure. Kasi po, oh, nandun okay. lahat yung... Uh, yan ba, yan. Alam nyo, ganito, no? dito nga sa EDSA, nagpatong tayo ng MRT ngayon kung saan saan nagpapatong hindi naman natin kinoclose eh di ba it can be done if you want it done ang dami sana alternative routes na pwedeng gawin kung yun lang ang ano ah kasi nabababawan ako eh up to this time uh, using adobo I recognize the problem kailangan ayusin yon kailangan everybody should be attached with the main sewage line but I believe unless you come up with a convincing uh, justification, I believe that this thing can be done without closing the island. Uh, may I interject? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, they have closed the island. We ha cannot do anything anymore. Maybe we should uh, plan so that yung six months na closure will yeah. be, ano, but, but let's not yeah. anymore argue whether to close the island or not. Oh, we yeah. have, they have closed the island. Yeah. What we are here now is to make sure that yung six months na nagsakripisyo ang mga tao, na isinara yung Boracay, pagtapos ng six months, we have done our job. That's why nga, kinu-question natin sila yeah. kung ano ba yung ginagawa nila to solve all the problem during the six months mm -hmm. para kung hindi sila on board na tama yung solution nila, eh, baguhin na nila ngayon para may ma-accomplish sila in six months. Kasi uh, well, sinasabi ko po yan, na so many people have sacrificed for this six months. May, yung mga uh, negosyante na naandun, nagsakripisyo uh, sila, sumunod tayo. Parang awa nyo naman. E eh, after yung mga manggagawang walang nawala ng trabaho, eh parang awa nyo naman, huwag nyo naman sayangin yung sakripisyo nila that they be able 
we'll be able to show something after six months na ano, mm. pwedeng... Uh, ano. Yes, okay. ma'am. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, itong sinasabi ko is, in fact, hindi naman tayo kailangan ma-hostage dun sa six months eh. Kasi if sasabihin ng mga stakeholders na kaya nilang gawin ito, na bukas yung isla, di, bukas pwedeng buksan yung isla habang ginagawa ito. Di ba? Eh kasi kung ganito mag-aantay tayo ng ilang months for the master plan, for sure, hindi ito magagawa ng six months. So, bubuksan natin itong Boracay ulit na hindi nagagawa yung kailangan gawin kasi una-una, eh, yung interagency thing, it, it doesn't work eh. There should be somebody in charge there, um, if I may, Your Honor. Set on direction. Calling this committee hearing not to argue about closing or not closing. They have closed it. I don't think they're going to open it. So what we should do in this hearing is to make sure that the sacrifice that we, that people made to close this island will be worth it. So can we now hear from Senator Drillon? With the permission of uh, the good chairman and chairperson and Senator <coughs> Trillianis, if he's finished, I'd like to take a few minutes of your time and the committee, Madam Chairman. Uh, yes, I concur uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with the views so far expressed, particularly that we are here today looking at the issues related to the rehabilitation of Boracay. And being from Region 6, certainly this is an issue which is close to my heart now. Uh, the committee will, after hearing all of the testimonies, the evidence will submit a report to the Senate which will basically outline what went wrong, why this has happened. And uh, this is an exercise of the oversight functions of the Senate in trying to f see what, whether or not the national government agencies have been performing its mandate. So to me, the first issue is the issues related to the short-term rehabilitation of Boracay. That is the period of six months and whatever can be done. And the role of the committee here at the Senate is to check as part of its oversight functions. It is certain and it is clear, and I agree with Senator Trillanes, that we cannot finish in six months what we failed to do in several decades, that Boracay was the jewel of our country's tourism industry. So <coughs> to me, uh, Madam Chair, may I submit that the second issue that we must tackle is how to make sure that we will not repeat the same uh, errors, mistakes, both uh, in substance and in procedure. One thing I have noticed, this is the first time I'm attending the meeting, this committee hearing, but I have been looking at this. Uh, Mr. Tsuso here has invited me uh, several times uh, to speak in Boracay, and I remember one instance when I was asked, what is wrong with Boracay? What can we do to help Boracay? And I had a very, my simple mind only, uh, I, I said, very simple, what we need in Boracay are three things. Political will, political will, political will. That's what we need because that's what I saw is lacking. But having said that, what I can see from all the, the who have so far uh, uh, testimonies and documents that we have seen is that there is simply no, no one managing Boracay. Marami pong cook, maraming uh, kusinero, <laughs> yung pagkain, yung lumalabas, eh, ang sama. Ah? So, firstly, I think from, just, just, just this morning, if you notice, Madam Chair, bawat issue, ibang ahensya ang tumitingin. Hindi pa po kasali ang local government unit who can assert number of powers and I think that's also the start, the, uh, the one of the reasons why we have so much confusion. The LGU invokes their, its powers correctly under the local government code. The various national government agencies would invoke its powers under various national laws. 
the DNR is there, the DILG, the, uh, the uh, Department of Tourism, etc., etc. And um, um, there is not a single body in charge. In fact, uh, I just heard uh, uh, S S Senator Trilliani said, uh, who is in charge? Who is in charge here? And, uh, and everybody seems to be pointing at each other uh, or, you know, uh, so, uh, uh, um, yes, uh, Secretary Simato is in charge of the task force Boracay. But that is, that is an interagency committee for the next six months. And maybe the task force Boracay can be a model of a more permanent body which can manage Boracay. Hindi po po pwede patuloy ang ganito na lahat uh, bawat isa kailangan kausapin mo, etc. You know, if we have uh, independent management people in places like Subic Bay, uh, Boracay contributes more to the GDP of this country than other agencies. And yet, we have no single uh, body that can manage. And, you know, if you look at it, this results in very long delays, lack of action, well, just, just to be more specific, uh, just to be more specific, why is Boracay West Cove Resort still open today? It is no longer open, Your Honor. Close na. Yes, physically you destroyed, but technically isn't there appeal to operate still pending in Malacanang? In fact, Malacanang has ordered, has issued a cease and desist order against the continued demolition of West Cove. What? Okay, yes, I'm, uh, can we recognize? Just. Good afternoon, sir. Good morning, yes. sir. Uh, we recognize Yusek Densing uh, of the yes. We have not received any CDO from uh, the office of the president, sir. Jeez, Miss Lang, my goodness, there is a specific, I, I, I think it's sometime in May 14 or thereabouts, and I have the official reports here, uh, the documents which, we, okay, on May 4, 2000, okay, on April 23, 2015, Attorney Anselmo Abungan, DNR Acting Assistant Secretary for Legal Services, issued the notice of issuance of a resolution for the cancellation of the Forest Land Use Agreement for Tourism Purposes. On May 4, 2015, Mr. Crisostomo Aquino elevated and tendered a notice of appeal to the Office of the President. On May, sometime, so, and I read, confer, you're not confirming it, but there is a cease and desist order from further demolishing uh, West Coast. Is that correct or not? I am not aware of any yes. decision. This is order, Your oh. Honor. But the, the the case has been elevated to the office of the president and it's still pending there. No. Still pending there. So, uh, can, is there uh, somebody from the Madam office Chair, of the president? Madam Chair, there's already been a Supreme Court ruling upholding the yes. upholding the, That's uh, the right of the local government yes. to do the demolition. That so ruling was issued three years ago, or yes, three years ago, three years after. Nagaaway pa tayo kung may sasarabay kung hindi kung hindi nag pinilit. Sinara na nga, Papa. technically. We've, we've actually closed it. And you've actually closed it. We've actually but started technically, the appeal is pending and the, because uh, from the cancellation of the flag T. But uh, it's already halfway demolished, uh, Your Honor. Yeah, you keep on, you keep on arguing me. I'm, to, I'm talking from the technical, from the legal point of view. If the Malacanang says that it is in, in that, that uh, well, can can we request? Okay, I I don't want to to uh, because I've read uh, uh, something else in in the newspaper that Malacanang issued a uh, no, hindi po. Uh, so just to settle this, just a little um, item. Sir Senator, I was interviewed on that issue. Uh, while there was an opinion that they've not made any decision on the appeal, they've not uh, issued any cease and desist order. And much to that expect, uh, Malacanang may not be able to do that because, again, the power to do a demolition of specific structures in a local government unit is with the 
uh, with the local government unit. Mm. <laughs> there, there, in fact, I'm reading from the records. Even that point, as to the power to issue a demolition order, nagtuturoan ang DNR at saka yung LGU. Huh? I know, I know there was a, no, in fact, there was a, the DNR issued the revocation of the flag T. Di ba? Yung po ang inapil. Ang, ang inapil. Yung, yung inapil. Revocation. The moment the flag T is uh, sustained, what happens? Oh. I mean, so, suppose, some, you know, things can happen in this country without our understanding it. Yes, um, okay. Uh -huh. If it is sustained, meaning yes. it stays, yes. then there is still a need for Mr. Aquino to secure other permits That's for him to be correct. able to operate. Yeah. That's correct. Well, what I'm driving at is that the lack of a single authority to manage Burakai, as in other agencies, like as I'm citing Subic Bay, mas ma malaki ang contribution ng Burakai kaysa Subic, and yet we have a Subic Bay Management Authority. I am, what I am uh, suggesting to the committee is we may want to take a serious look at consolidating the authority, the responsibility of uh, watching over Boracay to a centralized agency with uh, sufficient power which will assume many of or, or the various uh, powers that the different national government agencies are, uh, are exercising now which results in failure of management. The LGU would issue, would issue a, <laughs> a permit. And yet, you know, it, it, all kinds of violations. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm uh, itong si Boracay, uh, West, Boracay, West Cove Resort, ang lakas nitong may ari nito. Huh? <laughs> 9,000 square meters lang ang permit nyo. Maabot ng ilan? 3,000 ba? 3,000 square meters? 998, Your Honor. Senator Drillon, it's part of our agenda now to discuss this Boracay administration. Yes, that's so we that's just uh, during the first part of the hearing, we'll just have to do an update of what they're doing, and then afterwards, at the end of the hearing, we'll take up the Boracay authority. That is why authority. I am saying, so I am saying, I, I said there are two parts of the issues that I see. The first, the immediate issue is the next six months. What do we do? But I am, um, I agree that uh, we cannot finish everything in six months. What uh, the neglect that has happened there and the abuse that has happened in the past three decades cannot be corrected in, in the six weeks that or the six months that was given to us. So I am look and I hope the committee can look at some long-term solution and to me management is very important and, and the classic example of the Boracay West Cove Resort, which has, you know, my, my research indicated that 12 years ago, 2006, the attention of Boracay West Cove was already, I mean, they already called on, called on the authorities, called upon the management of West Boracay West Cove, that you're violating all the laws. What I saw there in the recent past, until the six months, uh, until this was destroyed, is, you know, I rem they like they, they put up structures in the huge uh, rocks. No build oh, no, yes, no build. And how did they get away with this? Uh, the, uh, the local government unit did not issue any uh, occupancy permit, and yet patuloy po rin siya. And uh, how did the DNR issue a flag T? Huh? Uh, only 300 square meters, umaabot na ng 3,000 square meters, and yet nobody seems to be able to stop him. Talagang malakas itong si, si, pangalan ito? Risostomo Aquino. May I request that he be subpoenaed in the next hearing? I would like to ask him questions and bring, uh, or bring all his papers uh, so that we'll know as an example of how abusive uh, private sector represented Mr. Aquino is. Uh, I would like to request that Mr. Aquino. And uh, we will do that, uh, Senator Drillon, next hearing. Uh, the following who are here, Yushek 
Yusek Sherwin Rigor uh, of DNR, Attorney Luis Menar Menardo Pag Pangulayan, Yusek for Legal Affairs of DAR, Yusek Senaida Maglaya of DTI, uh, Director Dominic Tutay, Bureau of Local Employment, DOLE, Architect Lara Salaver, uh, representing the Boracay Foundation, Inc., Mr. Salvio Lacerna, Mines and Geosciences Bureau, uh, Ms. Adrian Dunuan, a National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. Okay, thank just, you. Just, just one more point. We recognize again Senator Drillo. I don't know who can answer this, but as our chairperson stated, marami na pong nahihirapan ng mga mga gagawa rito dahil na pagsara, yung mga negosyante nahihirapan. What are, okay, we cannot correct everything in six months. Okay? What are the chances of uh, our being able to open before six months with certain basic reforms in place? And then we have the plans in place which will take more than six months, but already open it uh, with certain basic safeguards in place so that the, 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 uh, the island will not deteriorate. May I hear the views, Madam Chair, of our people? Who will answer the question? Uh, we recognize you, Dancing of the IL. Uh, even prior to the closure, uh, Mr. Senator, we've already uh, pinpointed specific milestones of the possibility of having a soft opening prior to the six months period given to us. Uh, we will be finalizing it in the next uh, board meet, uh, next uh, task force meeting, but for purposes of just discussion, although this is not official because this has not been adopted. Uh, part of what we've, uh, we've uh, recommended is there should be 30 consecutive days that the, the water uh, coming out of the island should be within uh, SG, SB standard, so within that level. Uh, at least 50% of the illegal structures uh, in the wetlands should have been dismantled. 70% uh, of the road system and the drainage system being uh, put up right now by the Department of Public Works should be in place. Uh, there should be 100% dismantling of, of, of all those who violated the 25 plus 5 easement rule. Uh, the sanitary landfill should, be, should have zero waste. Uh, we should have reclaimed five, uh, the five wetlands uh, uh, that has been put up structures on. And the uh, last portion is the drainage issue, which again is connected with the uh, upgrading of the road system. This will be proposed in the next. So in that will be, you said you are looking at a soft, soft opening, opening. Uh, meaning even before the six months. That's the proposal. We the, did. I mean, that's, that's the desire. That's, up the, up that's up the plan. Your condition, I don't think you can yeah, do That's what I was okay. going to say next. You know, you have imposed all of these conditions. Uh, is that realistic? Or, and the second question is, are those co conditions the minimum that we should have in order to save, to, to, to alleviate and to, to prevent further deterioration of Boracay? With all due respect, uh, Madam Senator, we, we've been aralan talaga namin. Oh, yes. Oh. I'm not saying namin. that you did not. That's I'm just why. asking for the record. Oh. Ang, Kaya ba? Ang, actually, for example, yung sanitary landfill, zero na po siya. Uh, uh -huh. Wala na pong waste doon, ilabas na lahat. Okay. Ang natitira na lang doon are debris. So ang waste, Iho, kaya walang waste doon. Nakasabi eh, lahat eh. yung ano. <laughs> Pero ang waste, you do that every day. Apo. Hindi ko mo zero today, it will yeah. be zero tomorrow. Apo. It's an everyday work. But prior so to ang closure. kailangan mong gawin doon, mag-waste, ilagay mo yung waste management Apo. facility mo. Eh may ayaw nga silang bumili. Eh. Yung DNR, pinabibili ko ng equipment para ilagay doon eh, wala nang bumibili eh. Pra prior to closure, Madam Senator, nagabundok po yung basura doon. So, yeah. they zero out no, na po. No, but okay. you can remove it. In fact, Secretary Simato removed it before they closed Boracay. Pero after uh, a number of days, kuno na naman. <laughs> Hindi kasi nauubos ang waste eh. Madam Chair. It's something that we produce every day. Kailangan yung system ang nag-work. Yes, yes. Madam Chair, if I may. So, at least you have a system at the soft opening that so that this will not be repeated. Ganun this, this will be discussed in detail during the next task force. Po. Right. So when is, po when is, uh, th without binding you to it, when is your scheduled co 
open and close quote soft opening. Just a soft opening. We're not saying that. I, I mean, w at least in prior to the closure, itong pinag-usapan po natin. Uh, 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 Sir, uh, at least the first week of uh, September. But we'll have to discuss yes, the definition just tentatively. of soft opening. Okay, well, we will not. We will not we, uh, it's not written in stone. Uh, uh, dali lang, uh, Yusek Benny, ha? Uh, tapusin ko lang ito. So, you're saying that by the first week of September, uh, you will exert every effort so that you can have a soft opening and our uh, ang mga magagawa natin pwedeng bumalik sa kanilang trabaho kahit partial yung ating mga mga may-ari ng mga resort doon ng mga ng mga struck ng mga hotel ay eh, pwedeng bumalik at mabuksan muli at uh, ma, ma, ang, ang kanilang lugi ay eh, mabawas-bawasan uh, without again I uh, would repeat without the same being written in stone you are looking at first week of September to do a soft opening. Oh, tama po kayo, without binding myself. Yes, yes, yes. Force, Maliwanag naman po. Mabuti po na yung by on record, my objective tayo so that pagbalik natin dito, okay. ha, uh, baka tingnan naman natin ulit kung hanggang sana ba tayo. Because for the record, Mr. Senator, uh, when we plan the potential closure at the time, ang una namin, namin tinignan, yung mga taong mawawala ng hanap buhay. Uh -oh. That's why we involve the other agencies uh, to be in the picture para mabigyan natin sila ng pangkabuhayan on the stage na sarado po yung ating right. Aburakay Island. Uh, may we ask uh, the Chair to recognize Yusek Antiporda, ma'am? Uh, he has been raising his hand. Uh, please, we will recognize Yusek Antiporda who is in charge of the National Solid Waste Management at DNR. Well, ma'am, uh, for the information of the uh, Honorable Senators, I just assumed my post uh, for about three weeks. And yet, uh, I've uh, talked to the uh, chairperson uh, some uh, uh, just five days ago on the said solid waste management uh, problem, and uh, immediately we uh, submitted all the documents already to PITC, and it was received yesterday. Uh, it will be subjected for a bidding and uh, for immediate implementation. So uh, first, uh, ma'am, let me. Uh, enlighten everybody on the uh, issue of uh, the uh, closure of Boracay. Uh, actually, we're on target. Uh, Hands-on po si uh, Secretary Simatu on the uh, Boracay uh, project. Uh. But sad to say, uh, the uh, private uh, sector, especially the business sector of the uh, Boracay, uh, of Boracay, is not cooperating. No po. Without that radar, without that radar, hindi po natin malalaman na napakarami po nilang itinagong tubo. What they've done is binarahan po nila yung tubo para kung hindi lumabas yung tubig, kaya ho hindi ma-identify. So ang ginawa po ng uh, inyong lingkod at uh, ng uh, DNR is uh, tiningnan po natin yung pinakadulo. Ano po ba yung pinakadulo ng dahilan kaya ho naging marumi ang ating tubig doon sa Boracay? Una po yung sa hotels po, ang ginawa nila, yung illegal po nilang tubo, binarahan nila so kahit eh, hindi po lumalabas yung dumi, so hindi nyo malaman saan galing yung tubig. Pangalawa po, yung ating pong mga illegal structures doon, yung ating pong informal settlers na direkta po doon sa mga wetlands po dumudumi na. So, kaya kailangan po natin isara talaga dahil kailangan po talagang tanggalin lahat ito. Yung pong oh, nangyari. Alam mo, Mr. Benny, Apo. when you point to the private sector, Apo. bilangin nyo po yung apat na daliri nyo. Doon po tinuturo ikaw rin eh. Uh, when you point your finger at somebody, remember your three or four other fingers point at you. What am I saying? Yes, private sector may have had its fault, but your failure to regulate and exercise the powers that are given to you by authority of the law is also responsible for the deterioration of Boracay. So, huwag na tayong magsisiyan kasi Apa -apa. kung gusto magsisiyan tayo, mas marami kami may sisi sa inyo. <laughs> uh, uh, we're looking here for solutions. That's my attitude. And that is why I'm trying to see what are the short, what I'm, I'm listening, why this happened, if with the end in view of, 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 of enacting uh, uh, solutions, uh, to long-term solutions. We are not saying that yes, those yes, who were guilty should not be punished. Yes, they should. But let's go beyond that and see what we can do. So. Kung pwede lang, wag, ayaw ko marinig yung mga kasalanan ng hindi pa, hindi pa, hindi pa, hindi pa private sector. Uh, Because sasagot ang mga yan. At sasabihin kasalanan nyo rin. With due respect po, uh, Senator, uh, uh, 
hindi ho namin isinisisi. Ay, kasi si... Ano po? Sabi mo lang. Hindi eh. po, hindi po. Ang, ang sitwasyon po kasi is, on target po kami, oh. ang nangyari lang po, medyo na delay. Kasi po, uh, yung una po may cooperation eh. Itinuturo po ano yung nangyayari, ganon. But nung itinago po nila at sinabi nilang ganito, nang, ang nangyari po, napilitan pa po tayo magkupay isa-isa. Itinago nila. Eh, eh bakit? Nandiyan naman kayo, hindi lang kayo pinanganak kahapon ng DNR eh. It's always been there. You, you have a full bureaucracy. Why couldn't the bureaucracy, the LGU, have checked on, on, on this uh, failure to follow the rules? Well, sir, this I've so been kept secret. So that's why, all I'm saying is, I don't want to indulge in that. Yeah. Nangyari ito nangyari, as uh, our chairperson said, nandiyan niya, nasarahan na yan. Because of our neglect, our duty here is to find out what we can do. I just want, uh, Senator Drillon, I just want to explain that what they're buying. They're buying yung factory ng, uh, to recycle plastic into uh, to recycle chairs plastic, yeah. and to recycle kitchen and garden waste into organic fertilizer, which we hope to put in Boracay. Pero yung bibili niya, it's for those LGUs uh, around Manila Bay. So there are eight provinces and 17 cities around Manila Bay, they will buy that plastic factory. And the uh, uh, composter, they will give to the 178 LGUs around Manila Bay. Pero, bibigyan, kasi kami, Manila Bay kami, so bibigyan kami, sana yung naka-allocate sa Las Piñas, ibigay nyo na sa Boracay. So, para meron na rin ang Boracay. Kasi dun sa purchasing na yun, hindi kasali ang Boracay. But because they are very much in need. Kami naman sa Las Piñas, we are doing it. So we don't need it. So you just give yung allocated sa Las Piñas to Boracay. Para makasali ang Boracay dun sa yung ano mo yan, yung authority to purchase yes, as soon as possible. Para mabigyan na natin sila ng recycling equipment. Kasi <laughs> kailangan nila yung Kasi I don't think it's so impra. Kaya tumatambak yung basura. They have to bring it to the mainland. Hindi kaya. Dami-dami noon. Dapat a portion should be recycled para maliit lang ang dadalhin sa wetland. Otherwise, failure din yung waste management sa Boracay. Okay? Apo, Thank Madam you. Chair. Uh, we Madam can Chair. recognize uh, uh, Senator Trillanes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, Senator Dillon uh, proposed earlier about the uh, creation of uh, a, a body that would manage uh, Boracay. And uh, just to mention, we filed a bill uh, about it, the creation of a Boracay Development Authority, similar to what they have in uh, Subic, in John Hay or Clark. Uh, Yusek uh, Densing, would, would you endorse this to your, to your president? Because as mentioned by, uh, the, by the chairman, after the opening, everything will revert back to the control of the LGUs and the different uh, bodies uh, uh, governing uh, Boracay. So, Fr sir? From the, uh, sir, uh, Senator, from the very beginning, tama po si Senator Franklin, we looked at the short-term solutions, that's why mm -hmm. mayroong six months, no? yeah. and the long-term solution, which is the same proposal we had that last March, to create a Boracay Development Council, Boracay Sustainable Council, for the long-term okay. effect. In our perspective, not all local government officials elected are management savvy. Yeah. In other words, what we wanted to do is to treat Boracay Island, being one of the top three beaches in the world, yeah. to be managed professionally, okay. and the Boracay Development Authority being composed of various government agencies, okay. the private sector, and representation uh, of the local wait, government. Wait. Uh, I think the, the, there is a difference between what you mentioned about the interagency council thing. Um, what we're proposing is a Boracay Development Authority, Apo. a single body who is in charge of granting uh, permits Apo. and uh, have, would have regulatory Apo. power. So, okay, there is already a, a bill uh, in, the, in the Senate, and I believe in the House Meron it can be po. done. By Apo. the time uh, September comes, then we can, we can have it uh, uh, passed into law Apo. already. I, I think... Uh, I think what what is in uh, what we're going to create is a blend of what you're saying mm. and what there will be a council, but the, the decision of the council will be implement, implemented by the professional manager. Oh, 
Oo, okay. kasi pag walang mag-i-implement yeah. nung decision ng yeah. council, edi eh, hindi rin mai-implement. Yes, I, I agree with that, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah. I agree with that. Pag walang nag-implement, huh? walang mangyayari sa decision ng council. But one of the things that we must take care of, ma'am, is that when you let the national government, we have to should think it out carefully. Because look, ma'am, DNR has its own mandate. Uh, 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 DPWH has its own mandate. Uh, and we know how this bureaucracy works. Pag hindi po inapprove ng secretary ng, ng agency involved, hindi po gagalaw. I have seen that. Uh, maybe we should consider, I'm not uh, making, maybe we should consider a, a real uh, authority. Authority, authority who will authority. assume the powers of all the agencies, issuance of permit, enforcement, uh, etc. Para po ba isa tayong sisisihin? Eh ngayon, ang dami nating tinuturo. Just a proposal. No, no. Uh, we ano, ibig sabihin yung all the concern people will sit in the board, they yes. will decide, and it will be implemented. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. But, okay. Ito po ang reality on the ground. Si DNR nakaupo po dun sa council. Pag may proposal, sasabi niya, tanungin ko si secretary. That's not, that's not the bureaucracy, mami. Eh. Wala naman silang kapangyarihan, eh. Ha? So, tanungin ko yung secretary ko kung pwede ba ito I, that's, the, that's the reality on the ground. Now, that alone will take time. Why can w w may I, may I submit to the committee the possibility of looking at a single person who will do the functions of the DNR in Boracay, who will do the functions of the DNR in the, uh, of the, of the DPWH, of the tourism, something like that. That's my concept. And maybe it can be examined, uh, experts can be called, but uh, my, my concern about a, a, I have proposed that. I'm looking at it. I'm not convinced that it is the, the, the efficient way. Ah, kailangan po, kailangan po, oh, oh, kailangan po may diktador dun eh. Ah? If I may, uh, I, 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 Mr. Oh. Chairman, um, oh. it's, uh, I believe there's already a template. Uh, the one in uh, Subi, Clark, and uh, yes, John yes, A. It's, yes, it's a template. Yes, yes, it's a template. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, so we, we have a model do. ready to look at. Yes, sir. Uh, ang quick response ko lang po, Mr. Senator, is yung members ng council, wag na po natin gawin kasi ang nangyayari po maski sa mga GOCC, is representative. Then, doon 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 yung sinasabi nyo, tatanungin ko muna si Secretary. Once appointed to the council, wala nang papalitan. So, we're talking about the specific person who cannot be replaced and no alternatives. Then we have a president of the authority or an administrator who will implement the, the policy set by the council. Ang, yun lang po ang comment ko, dapat walang palitan ng tao. Kasi dapat ang nakalagay doon, kung ako nilagay ng, ng secretary ng DNR, ako na yun. Walang palitan, walang alternatives. This, they, you can suggest whom to appoint and then the president will appoint the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd just like to continue. Uh, I'll just wrap up my questions. Um, who, who's in charge of the uh, livelihood or the interim livelihood program for the displaced workers. Uh, yun ang pinaka ang importante ngayon kasi recognize the assistant secretary of the DOLE. Ganda umaga po. Yes, ma'am. Sir, I mean, Madam Chair, meron po kaming proyekto, programa sa Boracay on uh, livelihood and at the same time emergency employment. Ni-replenish po namin ng pondo yun. Uh, how much na po yun na, na di-disburse nyo dyan? At ilang workers specifically na ang naging recipients nito? Out of the uh, out of the close to 25,000 workers na pinrofile po namin pasimula nung nagsara composed of formal workers and informal workers, ang naka-avail na po ng livelihood na, I, na binabanggit namin ay more, close to 6,000 workers, uh, Mr. Senator. And then, uh, out of the close to 450 million pesos na ipinasok naming pondo dito sa livelihood program for Boracay, ang nakokonsumo na po namin as of today ay around 18, 20 million 
from the 450 million kitty that we have reserved so for so Boracay. Okay, so you're you have uh, extended support to almost one fourth of the workforce. The uh, now, how much per uh, worker was uh, disbursed per month? Ang inallocate po namin ay 50 percent ng minimum wage, Your Honor. Therefore, um, dun sa region na ito, uh, nakakuha ho ang mga workers na nag-avail ng 4,200 pesos per worker uh, per month for um, six months. Yes, pero um, regular na ba silang nakaka-receive? Uh, yun na pong mga nakalista sa inyo? Opo, na-institutionalize na po namin yung proseso ng so pagtanggap what, nila. Okay. What, what about the other... Three-fourths uh, of the workforce. Ito po ang pinag-uusapan namin, sir, kasi uh, ito naman hong aming information dissemination ay both local and national in scope. Nagtayo po kami ng iba-ibang desks doon at ang aming objective po, po ay maximum dissemination dahil gusto po namin talagang marating at ma-reach yung aming lahat ng na-profile, meaning yung 24,000 workers po na na-profile namin ay may pundong nag-aantay. Therefore, kami po ay nakikiusap talaga sa lahat ng kasamaan. Napunta na rin po kami ng radyo, ng dyaryo, okay. uh, lahat ng media para ma-reach ito. Dahil kahit po yung mga umuwi, umuwing mga trabahador, ay pwede rin po mag-avail nitong uh, programa na ito. Okay. Actually, so Hanggang ngayon uh, ay nakabukas ang aming mga desk. Sa, may, meron po kayong, saan po located yung inyong mga opisina? Sa, okay. Meron po kami sa mismong sa Boracay, sir. Uh -huh. na, ka, katabi po namin ang desk ng DSWD. So araw-araw po yung bukas. Meron po kami sa region, then sa regional ng Dole. At... Uh, Sa, saan po yung regional? Meron po kayo sa mainland? Kasi kung sa Boracay, baka hindi na sila makapunta. Saan po Opo. doon? Lahat po ng field offices namin at satellite offices. Uh, sa, 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 Kalibo, sa Malay, sa Kalibo, Kalibo meron. Sa Aklan. Okay, so ano ang kailangan nilang ipakita na proof para to avail of your... Uh, Nasimplify na rin po namin itong requirements na ito, sir, para hindi sila mahirapan. Meaning, uh -huh. ID. Uh, ID. Government issued ID. Uh -huh. and, uh, so meron na kayong master list? from the business sector. Opo, sir. So meron Opo. na kay master list para hindi hindi naman na uh, i-take advantage din ng mga unscrupulous individuals. Yung binigay sa amin ng Malay LGU na yeah. 17,000 na further populate namin sir, na expand namin to close to 25,000. Okay. Kasi mara, mas marami pa po sa 17 talaga. 17,000 ang okay. trabahador doon, both coming from the Formal sector and informal sector. Uh, sige po, just keep on extending wala, support, ma'am. Wala bang DSWD dito? May project ba ang DSWD? Walang DSWD? Wala. Okay. Ah, uh, there. Are you DSWD? Uh, can you expound your program sa mga trabahador? Chairperson and the Honorables, uh, I am Belma Villaluna, Department Legislative Liaison Specialist of the DSWD. I was tasked to attend this hearing on observer capacity only, ma'am. Uh, Director Gemala of Region 6 is with the President in Iloilo today. So she, w she cannot make it. Mukang hindi ko masyadong ano, ma'am. You ask your Not boss provide. to ano, give a report, a uh, written report yes, ng ginagawa nyo sa Boracay. Yes, yes Madam Chair, answer. this was reported during the task force meeting yesterday. As of June 3, 2018, this is the summary of the DSWD efforts in Boracay. Uh, they've assisted 9,644 clients, uh, those who went out of Boracay Island. Uh, they've given, I think, between 500 to 7,000 pesos, depending on where they're going. 
uh, livelihood assistance, 1,323 uh, for a total, uh, and others, and for a total of uh, 12,313 clients that they have assisted, uh, total amount dispersed is 46.2 million as of June 3, 2018. Laki yung dinisburse ng DSWD Apo. kesa dole. Apo. Sabi nila 20 million lang kayo, kayo 46. That, Tama ba yun? That's why, Madam Chair, uh, medyo misnomer yung sinabing 36,000 ang mawawala ng kita. Dahil ang population lang, Boracay is 32,500 32, lang. Ang population. Opo. But the working population, di naman lahat yun working. Ang lumalabas mo natin, ikukumbine natin yung dole and... Uh, uh, DSWD, 12,313 plus 1,615, that's only 14,000 individuals, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, so, pati informal uh, workers? Uh, uh, sa in ng okay. DSWD. So, uh, ma'am? Madam Ay. Chair, may standby fund po kami na 450 million. Uh, but you yeah, uh, only have spent uh, 20 million so day. far. Okay. Thank so, um, ma'am, I'd just like to uh, ask uh, one more thing. Okay, I would like to address this question to Boracay 2B System and uh, Boracay Island Water Company. Um, kailan nyo matatapos yung uh, main sewage line? That's, uh, saan connected ito? Saan ito may ano ba, wastewater uh, treatment plant or sewage treatment plant? Yes, uh, good morning, Senator. Yeah. Uh, right now, we are concentrating on the tasks that were given to us by DNR. One of which, sir, is the rehabilitation of the drainage mm -hmm. and uh, an outfall mm -hmm. that we will have to construct. That long outfall, Puyon, Senator, yeah. one kilometer away from the shore. Yeah. And uh, the rehabilitation of Lugota and uh, wetland number six. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator, yung tukul po dun sa aming uh, drainage dun po sa aming sewer line, we are in the process of designing it and uh, we will soon construct it as well as uh, rehabilitating, sir, our uh, sewage treatment facilities. So, will you make it uh, uh, on time? Sir, right now, we started the fabrication of 100 individual modular sewage treatment facility. This is to equip all hotels, especially our clients. Mm. Parang ano siya, sir, yung uh, uh, a modular treatment facility installed in each establishment. So, therefore, they will not be discharging Wastewater. Okay. So, uh, about ba? So, so yes, sir. Uh, right now, the production is ongoing. We're hoping completion in about three to four months, sir, and start installation of uh, this modular water treatment facility. This will ensure, sir, that uh, all the wastewater of the hotels, of our hotel clients, will be already compliant with the DNR standards for uh, effluents in the island of Boracay, sir. So, meron yung uh, mga lahat ng accounts nyo, lahat ng clients nyo, can you, can you um, was this assure uh, the public and everyone that lahat sila nakakonekta dun sa main sewage line? Uh, sir, right now, sir, they have the option to connect to the uh, PSA-owned uh, sewer line. And uh, for those that are not, uh, kung hindi po makakaabot dun sa PSA sewer line, the recommendation of our company is for them to install a modular sewerage treatment facility in their establishment. So therefore, the effluent that will come out from their establishment will already be compliant with the uh, standards of the NR Region 6, sir. So you would be able to confirm na bawat uh, account ninyo would, had, uh, would have such a uh, uh, remedy for their uh, wastewater problem? Uh, sir, right. Yung yes, sir. Yung sa amin, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I, so, yes, sir. Okay. Pag uh, nagawa na nila yon, can you at least put a uh, a marker or a sticker on their uh, gate or whatever para ma malaman nyo lang kung sino na yung compliant? It is uh, fully coordinated with the DNR, sir, because uh, they will not be issued discharge permit should they not comply with the regulations of uh, DNR on effluents, sir. Okay, so th th that's the bottom line. Kasi kung la yung accounts ninyo, accounts ng uh, Boracay Island Water, ay eh, compliant na, naka-attach na sa ano, then mawawala yung problema ng, uh, ng uh, DNR and hindi nyo na kailangan maghanap-hanap pa sa, sa ilalim kasi nga nakita nyo na for yourself na nakakonekta sila. Yes, sir. Task yes. po na binigay din sa amin ng DNR yan, sir, for the past months. 
together with Boracay uh, Island. Island Water and BTSI and uh, the local government, we have been helping DNR on identifying illegal discharges sir, of uh, establishments in the island of Boracay. Mm -hmm. And we have been submitting to them the uh, reports yeah. of all that we have discovered in the island of Boracay. As well as, sir, yung lahat po ng tasks that uh, uh, they have given us on uh, yung Boracay Island Water and Boracay 2B to help in the rehabilitation. And uh, we fully appreciate, Madam Chairman, your uh, recommendation of uh, eventually reviewing the possibility of the delineation mm. and uh, we believe that uh, this should be taken up in a different venue considering all its complications because it is not as perfectly similar to that of Metro Manila where the uh, dams and the pipelines were previously owned by the government. Dahil, as you mentioned ma'am, in this case, TSA is, uh, may, may be conflicted because uh, they are part of uh, Boracay to be okay. systems, but we believe, uh, of, I'm sorry, of Boracay Island Water, but we believe, Madam, that uh, lahat naman po may solution if we would just all discuss and sit down on this. And besides, uh, Boracay is very small. Ibig sabihin, hindi naman to as complicated as uh, Metro Manila. Yeah. Boracay is just 1,000 hectares. Eh. You can really take care of it if you want to. No? Very small. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we will just have to consider greatly about the hydraulics, which may be very difficult, as I was uh, advised by our, uh, by our technical engineer. So it would take a lot of discussions before we would be able to delineate Boracay 2B and uh, the territory of Boracay Island water. And uh, we fully appreciate that recommendation of yours, but we believe that this should be discussed thoroughly. As I mentioned, ma'am, hindi po siya kasi katulad nung nangyari sa Manila where it used to be owned by MWSS and then it was easy to decide the, uh, the uh, areas because right now uh, where the pipes of Boracay Island water runs, ganun din po yung pipelines namin in oh. the same manner as... Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. I, I believe uh, as you mentioned uh, yes, there sir. should be another mm -hmm. venue for that and um, I believe mas, mas madaling uh, problema yan ma-handle for as long as, sabi ko nga, you take care of your accounts, make sure that every individual account would be connected to the main sewer line, then uh, matatanggal natin yung problema. Kasi I believe, wala namang hotel siguro na given the option to, to connect to a main sewer line, eh, ayaw niya at gusto niya diretso sa dagat. I don't think meron taong ganun. Ano? Uh, kahit siguro yung pinakang balahura na tao, given that choice, gagawin pa rin niya yung tama. Okay. I, I agree with you on that, yeah. Senator, that uh, wala naman po sigurong gusto talaga mag-violate. However, probably you may ask the hotel operators on the reason why they will have to discharge illegally. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, sir, that uh, we believe is uh, also the reason behind them illegally tapping to the drainage is uh, the outdated uh, sewer system that we need to thoroughly rehabilitate yeah. at this point in time, which I believe yeah. is being done right now, sir. So should uh, the new sewerage line will be installed in the island of Boracay, capable of receiving all the wastewater of the hotels and uh, to complement the, even the uh, individual STPs in the hotel, no? So we believe, sir, that we will be able to resolve the issue in lesser in less than six months, okay. provided the conveyance of the wastewater to the sewerage treatment plant of Boracay uh, Island Water and Boracay 2B will be able to be completed. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least uh, meron na kayong solution dyan. Yes, Kaya sir. Kaya nga, given that, eh, I believe lahat naman, uh, at least uh, yung accounts nyo, would, would avail of that. Ngayon, I would address the same question to uh, Boracay Island Water. Uh, Yung uh, pag, uh, pag so certified dun sa mga accounts ninyo that they are connected to the main sewer lines, would you be able to do that? Uh, just to provide some context, uh, Your Honor, yeah. um, there is an existing uh, municipal order 307 which uh, uh, states that uh, before an establishment uh, begins their business operations, they should mm -hmm. secure a wastewater management certificate either one they have a sewer treatment facility inside their uh, premises or they are duly certified to be connected with the Boracay Island Water Company uh, even long before uh, this uh, closure uh, commenced we have already outlaid uh, 
budgeted as early as 2017, a budget of 2 billion purely for wastewater management for the island of Boracay for the next five years. Only that, with the closure of Boracay uh, on uh, uh, April 26, we are proposing to accelerate these projects to uh, address these uh, pressing concerns. When, if before the, uh, the, the closure was announced by the, the Honorable Secretary, we have already uh, outlined specific plans under the guise of specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound activities. For the, next two for the first two months of which uh, we started uh, in coordination with Boracay, uh, NDNR, and the LGU, the first uh, things that we did was cutting off illegal connections to the drainage system. Uh, this has been uh, documented in various media, and uh, true enough, uh, on our account, on basis, on the basis of uh, the areas which DNR assigned to us, we have uh, cut off more or less 50 illegal connections to the drainage system. Now that is only for the first two months. Okay. Uh, well, j just to abbreviate the uh, the proceedings. Uh, well, you mentioned about the the permits. Uh, required from business establishments, but again, uh, as mentioned, probably because of uh, neglect, incompetence, or corruption, that uh, these permits are granted just the same even without those uh, sewage treatment uh, plants. Now, the question is uh, basically the same as what I asked uh, the to be water is. Would Boracay Island Water be able to ascertain that all their accounts are connected? to the main sewage line given a uh, specific period of time? Yes, Your Honor. In fact, uh, we have identified 529 accounts, commercial, mm -hmm. which we are targeting at this present time to be connected within the next six months. We believe this is, these are essential uh, contributors to... Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, you have already eaten up two months. Uh, I believe you need to shorten that... Uh, the timeline for them. And I believe uh, given that span, any hotel or uh, commercial establishment would be able to, to do that in uh, at most two months. Uh, sadly, uh, yeah. Mr. Senator, uh, in spite our invitation to connect to our system, uh, the, 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 um, the, the commercial establishments, commercial establishments Still do not it comply? Seems, yes. Okay. Uh, as since, uh, uh, six, since we started April 26, only 50 decided to connect. Okay. Then you better give this uh, uh, non-compliant uh, clients of yours to the uh, the ALG so that uh, the proper enforcement of uh, pertinent laws uh, would be made. Dahil uh, medyo yan yung mga kailangan ipasara na talaga at ipa-revoke yung mga licenses. So, I believe at this point in time, once mabigyan sila ng uh, enough uh, warning, papaspasa nila yan. And uh, hindi kasi pw pwede eh, na hahayaan lang natin sila dahil kung ang target natin, September, uh, first week of September, then everybody should should be on board. Ngayon, kung yung Tubi Water System, kaya niya sa kliyente nila, then dapat yung Boracay, Boracay Island Water Company rin. Yes, uh, we should be, uh, be providing enough motivation for yeah. them to connect. Yeah. For a reason that uh, the, the, the sewer system is already there, already there for them to connect. But it seems like uh, uh, I don't want to look five months ahead that uh, it's only before the opening of Boracay that they would decide to connect. Uh, we wouldn't want that to happen, which is why yeah. we are uh, uh, expanding our information education campaign okay. for them to connect this early. So. Sige, uh, naintindihan ko, no? being a uh, private uh, entity, you don't have the compelling power to do so. But you can give that uh, those names to uh, the ALG, kaya nilang uh, i-compel ano yung mga yan. Uh, well, Madam Chairman, um, may I ask uh, any representative from the from the residents, meron bang ano, dito? Um, representative from the displaced uh, residents or residents? 
uh, okay, di Boracay Foundation, uh, ma'am, uh, Dr. Chusoy, so, me, opo, uh, meron po ba kayong mga uh, concerns or insights in relation to what's happening right now in Boracay? Uh, ang concern namin, uh, Senator, is the ongoing rehabilitation of Boracay and the proposal of the President to place the island of Boracay under land reform. That is our main concern. Because uh, uh, Boracay Foundation Incorporated, the uh, island's leading business association, fully supports the rehabilitation of the island having lobbied for the support and attention of national agencies tasked to preserve and maintain the island. We agree with the objectives of the closure to correct all violations and failures of government for the past decades. We all agree that the island has long needed improvements in infrastructure and stronger regulation. We emphasize that we subscribe to the good intentions of the President in closing the island for its sustainability and for the future generation to enjoy island's natural beauty. We are here now to talk about the proposal to place the island of Boracay under land reform. Boracay as a tourist zone is anchored on three laws and declaration as follows. First, on November 10, 1978, then President Marcos, recognizing the island's natural beauty and tourism potential, declared Boracay as a tourist zone and marine reserve under the control of the Philippine Tourism Authority, now called TSA. Through Proclamation 1801, making Boracay a tourist area for 40 years, since 1978 up to the present. In 1990, the tourist Department of Tourism developed the Boracay Island Development master plan to address the need for the sustainability and sustainable development of the island. The revolution from PTA to the LGU in 1991 was the basis of the local governance of tourism projects in Boracay. Lastly, the Tourism Act of 2009 mandated the LGU to do a comprehensive land use plan. The LGU of Malay was able to comply through the preparation of the CLUP, which the SB Malay adopted. All these laws and differing agencies' mandates had to lead to confusion that resulted in the non-implementation of the rules that should have protected Boracay Island. Recently, on June 4, 2018, Dars Yusek Ero announced that 868 hectares of land will be distributed, distributed for land agrarian reform. Boracay was never used as an agricultural land in recent history. In fact, the DAR's initial assessment found only four hectares of arable land on the island. This will then be divided and shared by many families. This is probably also the reason why topsoil is even needed to turn Boracay to productive agricultural farmlands. Land reform also does not assure the fact that residents use the land for agriculture, as tourism is a more viable and higher income industry. If this is the case, then the objective to preserve Boracay will not be achieved. Given this, the conversion of Boracay to agricultural lands appears to not be feasible anymore. Add to this, PD 1064 of former President Arayo proclaimed Boracay's agricultural lands alienable and disposable, and therefore subject to private ownership, which was upheld by the Supreme Court in 2008. Part of the Supreme Court decision is that the Congress should enact laws suited for the island's existing situation. In the past two months, self-demolition and voluntary correction has been truly outstanding as reported by the DPWH and the DNR themselves. We feel that unfinished government projects can then be completed by section over a definite and clear timeline. 
The delay in the release of government funds and the slowdown of the work in progress should not be reason to keep everyone out of job and extend the reopening of the island. The past two months have also been unbearable. People are lining up to get government support to sustain their families. We therefore suggest that the Senate should enact a law giving special emphasis to tourism zone, especially in the allocation of funds for infrastructure. For example, part of the income of Boracal be solely dedicated to the development of the island. Allotting funds and providing support will make Boracay a world-class destination we claim to be. Should a council be created to manage the island, we ask that stakeholders from the Boracay be included. The closure of Boracay is humbling experience for all of us. Let us take this opportunity for the private and public sector to work hand in hand to make a big step forward environmental preservation and work towards sustainable tourism. We hope all agencies and local governments unit, including the provincial government, work in unison to create system to ensure that all infrastructures built are efficiently utilized. More importantly, we look forward to an active and inclusive interagency task force involving stakeholders in its rehabilitation plans with open lines of communication necessary to ensure success, understanding, cooperation, and efficiency during and after the island's rehabilitation. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, uh, Dr. Henry Chusoy, the president of, or uh, rather the chairman of the Baracay Foundation for your uh, statement. And please give us a copy of your statement so it will form part of our uh, committee report. Okay. Madam Chair. Uh, we recognize Senator Drillon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, following up on what uh, Dr. Chusoy mentioned, he mentioned about uh, the statement of the president that Boracay will be subjected to land reform. May I know who recommended that to the president? Who recommended that Boracay be uh, subject of land reform? I think uh, the USEC for Department of Agrarian Reform will who, answer who is that. The USEC? Uh, Pagulayan po. Mr. Pagulayan. Uh, Attorney Pagulayan, kayo yeah. po ba? Yeah, yeah. Uh, good, uh, good, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. Senator. The statements made by the President, the directives to cover under the Ground Reform Program, Boracay Island, is uh, the initiative of the President, Mr. Senator. Uh, it was an instruction given to all agencies of government after the implementation of the Master Development Plan and the cleanup of Boracay that the, that the second phase will involve coverage of agricultural lands under agrarian reform. Notwithstanding the instructions of the President, Mr. Senator, there has already been an ongoing initiative on the part of the Department of Agrarian Reform to look into the possibility of covering agricultural lands in general under Executive Order 407 of uh, Series 1990 of President Corazon Aquino all lands of the public domain and all agricultural lands owned by government can be covered. Uh, are there still, uh, from my impression, there are, these are forest lands, not agricultural lands? Uh, Mr. Senator, right now, based on the proclamation of G uh, the former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, Proclamation uh, 1064, 400 hectares of Boracay has been uh, classified as forest lands forest. and 329 hectares has been, have been classified as agricultural lands or alienable and disposable. Mm. Within the ambit of the Public Land Act CA 141, President uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo is empowered to do that. And as a matter of fact, in the Supreme Court decision stated earlier, the 2008 decision, the actions of then President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo was upheld by the court as in accordance with the Public Land Act. Having said that, and with the with Proclamation uh, 1064 in our midst, this provides an opening for the state to look into the possibility of uh, applying the mandate on agrarian reform to Boracay because it is a fact that uh, there are areas in Boracay which may be covered for they are still agricultural. There are no owners over the land and as stated in our uh, comprehensive agrarian reform law, any agricultural land may be covered under the program 
on not based on uh, there are some technical considerations sir, but having said that what is clear is that uh, the president would like to implement the program for the benefit of the residents the inhabitants of the island and also with due regard to the rights of the indigenous peoples in the area mr senator okay this only strengthens the resolve that we should have a body that will manage Boracay and from whom all powers should emanate. Uh, subject, of course, to the general power of the president. But these are issues that would, that the decisions are made would crop up from the left field. And I am sure that, you know, if you ask uh, the, the Department of Tourism, you ask NEDA, there are other views on this, but then the president makes a statement. So, talagang, uh, 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 hindi mo na, you know, the lack of coordination. I am sure uh, different views will be expressed here. Like, uh, for example, how many hectares would be covered by land reform? 400 hectares? At present, Mr. Senator, the basing on the proclamation of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, Proclamation 1064, there are about 329 hectares of agricultural lands. And did I hear you correctly? That we'll have topsoil on, on this, uh, we'll cover this area with topsoil para magiging uh, agriculture, uh, fit for agriculture. Tama po ba yan? I think those uh, statements were made in the course of some interviews of other undersecretaries of our department, but that is not the position of the department, Mr. Senator. No, but, uh, okay. um, if it's mentioned by under your undersecretary, it must carry some authority. Ano, lagyan natin ng topsoil, 360 or so hectares of, of Boracay uh, Mr. Senator uh, uh, I, I don't uh, whose idea is this? Your undersecretary? I am uh, investigating on that Mr. Senator uh -huh. I represent the legal sector I Undersecretary Yusek ano? Yusek Ero David Ero David Ero daw? Saan nila nakuha itong idea ng ito na magtatap soil sa tatlong daang hektarya? Sino ba ito? Sino marunong ba magaling ito, no? Uh, Sir Senator, he's the head of the Task Force Boracay of the Department of Ground Reform. He's now in Iloilo. I, Mr. Senator, uh, Madam Chair, I am uh, trying to lay down the legal basis yeah. forming part of the ways by which the department and the other yeah. CARP implementing so agencies... because of the legal basis established, now you come up with the idea of putting topsoil on 300 hectares. Uh, Mr. Mr. Senator, no, the, it's not part of the action plan, the topsoil. Um, it has never been part of... Maybe uh, my dear colleague was expressing uh, one of the possible ways of uh, making... ensuring uh, vegetation oh, coverage okay. in the areas. Okay, humingi ng appropriation to buy topsoil for 300 hectares. That will not happen, Mr. Senator. It. Anyway, I'll go to the next topic. Yeah. Just, I, I clear this with, the, with uh, the chairman. You know, the earlier issue that I brought up, that the Malacanang... Uh, ordered uh, the stoppage, the stoppage, uh, cease and desist order on the demolition, demolition of West of Barakay, West O. I will read to you a news article. Okay, it's uh, appearing in Panay News on uh, June on 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 when is it? May 14, 2018. It says, "Quote: Palace stops demolition of Barakay West O." It says, the office of the president has ordered to stop the demolition in the of the main building of the controversial Boracay West Cove Resort. In a two-page letter dated March 23, Deputy Executive Secretary for Legal Affairs, Ryan Alvin Acost Acosta, said the palace has yet to decide the appeal of the West Cove owner, Chrysostomo Aquino. The DNR has cancelled the resort's forest land use agreement for tourism due to its environmental violations. This prompted Aquino to appeal before Balacanang. But in February of this year, DNR Secretary Roy Simato ordered the demolition of the resort's famous viewing deck. The resort, uh, Aquino's resort personnel, upon his order, also helped in the demolition. Several weeks later, the, Mala the Malay local government ordered the closure of the resort and the demolish 
the, to, and demolish its main building. The demolition was due to numerous violations of the resort, which was called the mother of all violations uh, in Boracay. So may I request the committee to, to issue an invitation or subpoena at your discretion, Madam Chair, both to uh, uh, legal sec to e assistant, e Deputy Executive Secretary for Legal Affairs, Ryan Alvin Acosta, and bring with him the March 23, 2018 letter. Uh, number two, uh, the uh, we want to invite. Parang fake news. No? Uh, parang fake news. So, para malaman natin. Uh, oh, the only yeah. way to find yeah. out is when you look at the source document, which is the March 23 letter. Also, we would request, uh, as we have requested uh, earlier, uh, Mr. Crisostomo Aquino to attend this hearing and bring with him all the pertinent papers of uh, West uh, of uh, West Cove, Boracay, West Cove. Para uh, malaman uh, natin. Sen dear yes, Senator, press release from. Uh, 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 where, uh, rather, Department of Interior and Local Government uh, on uh, uh, Ma May 16, 2018. Na this is fake news. Uh, eto, from uh, uh, Yusek Densing. Ikaw nag press release nito. Uh, Madam Chair, it was based on an interview from ABS CBN by Ted Filon. Uh, while we confirm that in the statement there was uh, a recognition of the deputy, deputy executive secretary on legal that it's still the, the flag is still on appeal. Never did the letter mention that uh, we have to stop the demolition. That's why as of so, yesterday. So are you are you proceeding with the demolition? Yes, as of yesterday, yes, sir. To, to when will you complete the demolition? Because uh, even Supreme Court has decided on this case. Apo, apo. Huh? Tatlong taon na nakaraan ng Korte Supra. Apat na taon na nakaraan ng Korte Supra. Sinabing apo. illegal ito. Very sensitive lang, sir, kasi nakalagay siya sa tabi ng bundok, sa oh. no-build zone. Oh. So, pag pinaspasan ho namin, baka ho, a portion of the uh, mountain will be... Uh, eh, sir, may kasalanan nun eh. Opo, opo. Oh. So, uh, it's already halfway as of yesterday. All right. So, when is your deadline? When, when do you finish the demolition? Well, we met again yesterday and we're now talking to the Philippine National Police. Tinitingnan po namin, baka pwede magkaroon ng packets of... Uh, Explosive, you know, maliliit lang. Yes, uh, uh, so para no, ho, hindi no, you have not yun. answered my question okay. yet. When do you finish the demolition? Uh, uh, that we will have to talk about it. I, I pull address, Mr. Chair. Uh, 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 so, sir, hopefully before ano, before mag opening, kasi pinapa madaliri ni Secretary Anyo, sa minya asap. So, it was supposed to be yesterday pa ang deadline namin. So, uh, hopefully before the opening, we can complete at least 80 percent. Uh, October 26 is the target date to reopen officially Boracay to tourists. Okay, by October 26, 26 you will complete the devolution of uh, this uh, Boracay. Well, at least nasa 80 to 90 percent, Mr. Senator. <laughs> Kasi, sir, hindi, naka, nakadikit talaga eh. So, very, very... Yeah, yeah, and they were only... Uh, ano, uh, mas, maski, sir, yung, ano, yung natural formation doon na bato. Yes, hindi tirayuan ho, niya. Hindi ho namin maayos. Kasi pag, pag uh, dinikdik ho namin, baka yung, yung, yung bato, bato mismo, mismo masira. Oh, is there no criminal violation? Uh, what they did, I really... Res when I saw it, talagang, you know, this is the mother of all violations. Huh? Bakit masyado malakas itong si Chris Ostomo Aquino? I wouldn't comment on that. Ah, you wouldn't comment on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Baka sir, kapangalan niya si Chris Aquino ito. Artista. <laughs> 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 sige. Okay, sige. So we'll just expect the uh, appropriate invitation. Uh, the appropriate invitation, uh, Madam Chair. Has been moved that we will call uh, the honor of uh, West Cove, uh, Crisostomo Aquino, in the next hearing, plus uh, Executive, Secretary. Executive Secretary for Legal Acosta. So we will know direct from him if he issued a cease and desist order to stop the uh, uh, demolition of West Cove. Okay, that has been decided. Uh, uh, okay. And I just want to make some comments to Dar. Because uh, there have been a report to us of land statistics 
uh, in Boracay. Uh, it has been uh, determined that uh, Boracay has 1,064 hectares and 628 of that is under uh, agricultural A and D lands and uh, 400, uh, or rather 300, how much? 70, 7, 377 is uh, uh, forest land. Uh, it has been uh, the opinion of everybody that uh, the forest land, you can, cannot convert it to agri-land unless it has been passed by Congress. So definitely, uh, there will be no uh, land reform in the 377. Okay? So malinaw yun. Ngayon, yes, Madam yung Chair. natitirang 628, nakalagay dito sa report, 289 has been titled plus uh, 60. So that is already 350 hectares, more or less. Kung ang total noon ay 628, uh, natitira na lang is more than 200 hectares. And I'm sure lahat yung may tax declaration na to be titled. Oo. So malaki yung uh, kaso. Para ikaw, agawin mo yon at iland reform mo yun. Oo. <laughs> I mean, let's be responsible. Let's study what is the condition in Boracay before we make any press release. Because the people are confused. Oo. May isang araw, nag-press release kayo na ilan ang iraland reform? 400 hectares. The next day, it's 15 hectares. And the next press release, it's 900 hectares. Eh, medyo na ko confuse ang mata. Oh, let us not, oh, let us not uh, cause confusion on our people. Medyo magulo na nga tong bansa natin. Press release pa kayo ng press release na uh, contradictory to each other. Eh, na ko confuse ang mga tao. Pati ako na si Shak sa inyo. Eh, remember. You are under, I am oversight to your committee, Department of Agrarian Reform. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that you can make such pronouncement. Mabuti pa, mag-aral muna kayo together with LRA, DNR, and whoever are in charge of this uh, land and clarify what you can do. We are not against uh, giving land to people as long as we are doing it within the bounds of the law. <laughs> diba? Can we ask a comment from the ILG? Uh, Madam Chair, last week, I think Thursday or Friday last week, the Office of the Cabinet Secretary uh, requested for an interagency meeting composed of the DLG, DAR, uh, DNR, uh, Department of Tourism, and Department of Agriculture, and the Office of the Executive Secretary, primarily to discuss the executive order draft, drafted by the DAR. Uh, placing Boracay Island under agrarian reform. Uh, I mentioned that for the record, the President never mentioned in all his pronouncement to put Boracay Island under agrarian reform. He always, always has mentioned land reform be because this, these are two different concepts. Land reform is one process of distributing land. But putting it an, at an uh, agrarian reform, it means there should be investment in agriculture. Yung difference non. So it's just land reform. The, the message of the president is simply social justice and equity. Because, opo, because for the past uh, five years, if you look at the average gross receipts from Boracay Island, they have been generating $800 million in gross receipts a year. And yet, the people in Boracay are still poor. And this is the reason why the president wanted to distribute wealth in the island, specifically asserting government's... Uh, sovereignty or proprietary rights over the island. So ang naging end result po namin doon, kasi maski po si NCIP pala who is present, wanted the whole island to be, un, to be given to be, be, to be given as CAD T. The end product po, Madam Chair, is uh, I recommended that an area recognized or uh, that is still arable or uh, fit for agricultural use, put it under agrarian reform. Uh, for the 2.1 hectares for the NCIP, if we still identify certain areas that we can give to the Katutubo or to the Atis, let's expand their 2.1 uh, hectare uh, CAD T with additional CAD T. For downtown Boracay, uh, most probably we can use another mode of distribution to residents or long-time residents. We can use free patent, sales patent, homestead as a manner of distribution. 
Uh, at the end of product po ang gusto po ni Presidente ay magbenepisyo po ang mga taga Boracay, ang mga Boracay nun sa pag-develop ng isla. Kaya nga po, kung, kung isinala ng isla ang five, ng, 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 ng anim na buwan at uh, ang tao nagbenepisyo sa paglaki ng ekonomi ng Boracay, hindi na dapat sila nangihingi ngayon ng, uh, ng abuloy o, o something from government kasi ho, hindi nagbenepisyo ang Boracay nun sa paglaki ng ekonomiya ng Boracay. At ang gusto lang ni Presidente, again, is social justice and equity to Boracay. I just want to uh, report this, that uh, Boracay has 377 hectares of forest land. So this cannot be land reform. This is, uh, for it to be land reform, it has to pass through Congress. So hindi na magagalaw yan. It's 377 hectares of forest land. And I don't think Congress will pass that it should be distributed. I think we should pass that we will make it a protected area and uh, and be a part of ecotourism, di ba? Ngayon, yung natitirang 628 hectares, nakalagay dito ang classification residential 189, uh, commercial tourism 392, government facilities 39 hectares, other uses, grassland, and open areas. Ito yata yun sa IPs, 6.9 hectares. Out of the 628 hectares, 289 hectares has been titled to individual. So, hindi mo na rin magagalaw yun unless you, ano yung Torrance title system. At meron pa daw additional 60 na na-titled. 60 hectares. So, ang na-titled na is uh, To, uh, ang total ng na-titled is uh, 289 plus 60, 350 halos. And na natitira na lang is 279. So, I think may claimant ito. <laughs> so, uh, medyo aralan natin. Huwag tayong basta magsasalita kasi nakakagulat yung mga sinasabi nyo. Pati ako, eh, natatakot sa ginagawa nyo. So, let's be Let's be quiet and don't make announcement. Let's study first what should be done, di ba? And then, kung ang gusto ng presidente makinabang yung mahihirap na tao doon, then let's find a way na sila ang mabigyan ng title nung, nung mga lupang yon. But it should be done legally. Hindi pwede yung naisip natin na i-distribute buong Boracay, i-distribute natin ang buong Boracay, di ba? Kasi nakakatawa yung press release. May isang 400, may isang 15, tapos may isang 900, which is not. Oh. Tapos lalagyan daw ng topsoil para pwede sa agriculture. I think even the beneficiaries in Boracay wouldn't turn them into agricultural land. I think they will turn them into tourism facilities para kumita sila ng mas malaki doon. Kasi kung hindi naman siya fitted for agriculture, you will not make money in agriculture. You better use it as a, a tourism project. Na pakikinabangan nung mahihirap sa Boracay. Hindi naman i-distribute do sa mayayaman sa Boracay. Okay? So, Ma I guess, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, um, uh, we'd like to assure the committee, the honorable members of the committee, Madam Chair, that the The advice, the statements made will be are being considered by the department. As a matter of fact, those pronouncements made in the media, uh, this representation can uh, was not present or was not part of the how uh, as to the processes which led to such uh, statements. In any event, Madam Chairman, uh, Madam Chair, the um, the Department of Ground Reform right now, in compliance with the instructions of the President, have formulated uh, two executive orders drafted to executive orders and they have been submitted to Malacanang. The, meet, the meetings, the interagency uh, meetings mentioned by USEC, as a, ma as a matter of fact, the proposal of this representation because we are now sitting in the Cabinet uh, Assistance Service and CAS is now working on these executive orders. The resolution or the immediate conclusion of the CAS members is to uh, form a special task force to work on the land reform or ground reform agenda of the president, instructions of the president. Um, Conflict pa kayo, sabi no. nila. It's just the intention of the president is just to distribute the land to the logical beneficiary. 
it's not uh, agrarian reform. Parang kasi pag sinabi mong agrarian reform, idideclare mo lahat ng lupa, agrarian reform, tapos ikaw ang magdedetermine kung kanino mo pamimigay uh, yun, madam, which is ma not yes, really no confidence chair, madam, no various modes of distribution yes, the land. Yes. Not limited yeah. to agrarian reform. Yeah. 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 Madam, of I course, I yung uh, forest land, that's out of your reach. Yes, ma'am. You have to pass a law in Congress to convert that. Yes, And I don't think we will pass any law in Congress to convert forest land to land reform. We will just do it as a protected area. Kasi kami, sa Las Piñas, we have 185 hectares na, na ano, protected area. Aba, edi, ano yun, protected area yun. And we made it into an ecotourism area. I think that will be good for Boracay na may empty space doon. I-declare mong ecotourism. Para yung masikip na masikip na burakay doon sa ibaba, pag natatamad na sila doon sa kasikipan ng burakay doon, aakyat sila doon and they can see forest land there. And you can make small facilities there to make it attractive to tourists. Yes. That would be a better way. Eh, kasi forest land yun, you cannot distribute that. Yes. Uh, just Unless there is a legislation that authorizes you to distribute Yes, Madam Chair, just to emphasize that uh, we are work it's a work in progress. We are working yeah. with the various And agencies. And when you do that, you have to consult yung LRA, DNR, ano yeah. ba yung mga land na yan? Sino ba ang nag a apply dyan? Baka may nag-apply na dyan na mahihirap din. E di tulungan nyo na matitled na doon sa mahihirap if that is the legal way of doing it. But never, never announced na igagawa nyo yung land reform Natatakot ang mga tao sa inyo. Ako nga, nasa shock sa inyo eh. Ba't yes, na-announce yes, na yes, gano'n, hindi nyo pa pinag-aaralan? Eh, yung dumating sa aming statistics eh, ibang iba doon sa sinasabi nyo. There is, uh, there is an inventory of the land in Boracay here. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Pag-aralan nyo to and make a program na tama dito, na hindi magkakagulo ang mga tao kasi pag ginulo nyo yan, Magkakagulo na naman ang mga tao. Nasisyak ang mga tao. Yes, Your Honor. In any event, Your Honor, we are careful, working with the various agencies. When you make announcement, kasi uh, ayaw natin na natatakot ang tao sa gobyerno. Oo. Madam, that, was, uh, that, that message has been conveyed to the concerned parties. Yes, Madam. Yeah, you have to convey that. Oh, alam mo, uh, dumaan kayo sa CA, marami na nga misgiving doon na inayos namin tungkol sa, sa inyo sa DAR, eh huwag nyo namang sabihin that that is founded. So, <laughs> diba tayo, tayo bumoto eh. Diba, nag-usap tayo. <laughs> Di ba, ano, kinu-question na natin yung mga, yung ano ng DAR, di ba? Yung ating uh, uh, how we will go about managing DAR kasi very controversial ang DAR. Oh, so, huwag niyong gawing controversial ang DAR. You be careful. Oh. In the same manner, yung DNR, huwag niyo din gawing controversial ang DNR. You be careful. Kasi people are watching you. And you have to do well. Oh, oh. Pakita niyo na alam niyo yung trabaho niyo. You study what you're going to do. Kasi Katulad nun, DNR, kayo ang Department of Environment and Natural Resources. So, expectation ng tao sa inyo, you will take care of the environment. Don't ever do things that you are destroying the environment. Kasi yun ang expectations sa inyo. Kaya in the same manner, yun dar, wag kayong mag-a-announce na magla-land reform kayo when hindi naman sa studies, eh hindi naman pwedeng i-land reform. Huwag kayong mag-announce ng gano'n, pag-aralan nyo. At bago kayo magsalita kasi natatakot ang mga tao. Alam mo, mga tao natatakot sa land reform. I'm sure yung lahat na may bahay doon sa Boracay, na doon na sila nakatira, kanilang bahay yon, although wala naman silang titulo doon, nagpapatitulo pa, sasabihin nyo ilalaand reform, na worried yun. Eh, paano ako? ba? Diba? Miski ako. Oh, matatakot yon. So, pag-aralan nyo muna kung ano yung pwedeng gawin. Huwag kayong mag-press release. 900 hectares, land reform. E, 1,000 hectares lang yung Boracay. E, di la, land reform yung lahat ang Bombaroacay. Pati yung anong hotel yon 
yung magandang hotel doon. Shangri-La, ila land reform, pati Shangri-La. <laughs> Kasi kung 900 hectares, 1,000 hectares lang ang Boracay, eh di lahat yun ila land reform, di ba? Oo. Oh. Pati yung malalaki, patay na si Dr. Chusuy. Oo. Oh. Kalaki-laki ng hotel sa Boracay. <laughs> Malaland reform. Okay, huwag kayong magsalita ng ganun. Pag-aralan nyo, mag-meeting kayo. Kasi there is a report here on how the land has been classified and how many have been titled. So, parang very, meron lang kayong areas that you can do. di ba? Okay? Yes, madam. So, yes, Your Honor. Are there any more comments? Uh, uh, so, we want to hear the LGUs from Boracay. Yung point of view na Manila, <laughs> ang nadinig lang natin yung mga agencies. Ngayon, uh, we will ask uh, uh, Governor Miraflores to report on his perception of what uh, our people are doing in Boracay. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Senator Delon, members of the committee. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank you for the chance to talk here and uh, share our views as far as the LGU of Aklan is concerned. And uh, uh, on the first part, uh, on the issue of uh, management uh, raised by Senator Delon, I would subscri subscribe completely to the idea uh, of uh, a management body that will manage the island as so we have seen that in the past, the present system of management is not working. During the time of President uh, Estrada, when this was brought up to our attention also, I was one of those who opposed it because I was standing on the ground that the local government should have uh, uh, autonomy on its uh, territorial uh, limits. But seeing uh, what happened to Boracay in the past decade, I have all, all of the mind that uh, a new management system has to be done so that uh, the mistakes of the past will not be repeated anymore. And so we will uh, submit a position paper, uh, Madam Chair, on this uh, issue so that it can be tackled as soon as possible. Uh, we are contemplating that uh, a management uh, body similar to the interagency body could be a part of the council or the authority that can be uh, done uh, in the moving forward after the rehabilitation of the island. On the issue also of the land reform, I agree completely with the <laughs> observation of the chair that uh, Boracay is not anymore suited for any agrarian reform program. Uh, I think what the president was thinking when he said land reform was also a way of distributing land to already the owners of the present areas that they are uh, uh, occupying. And uh, this uh, pronouncement of the DAR has really confused us and even is encouraging professional squatters. And this is quite rampant in Boracay when uh, they see an open land uh, which has no uh, occupants. They occupy it in, uh, as professional squatters and later on negotiate with the owners on uh, monetary uh, 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 considerations. So we hope that the DAI uh, should also be careful in its announcements because this has really uh, confused and uh, made our investors in the island rethink their positions uh, moving forward after the rehabilitation. As far as the rehabilitation, ma'am, is concerned, uh, we've been working closely with Secretary Simato and we're happy with what is happening now on the ground. Uh, we have passed several milestones. We have uh, given ourselves deliver deliverables. And in the past uh, two months, uh, we have seen uh, so much improvement, especially on the water quality. 
where before many parts of the island was not uh, uh, able to pass the water quality uh, standards, as of yesterday when we had an interagency meeting, only one portion of the island uh, that is in the back side of the island, which is the Tulubhan side, is not passing the grade. So uh, this has been given to Boracay Tubi as your main responsibility to rehabilitate. And uh, we are confident that before the end of this month, you will be able to finish this. And once uh, this is cleared up, as mentioned by USEC Densing, we are giving ourselves one month of testing, um, the whole month of July. And if we can pass those standards, uh, we're, we're hoping, as USEC Densing said, that we may <laughs> even have uh, to recommend a soft opening already by September. As to the road widening, ma'am, uh, almost 80% of the road is already widened. We are very happy that the stakeholders, the owners of the establishments along this uh, road has uh, also cooperated uh, very well. Some has done uh, demolition, self-demolition. DPWH has uh, uh, mobilized its uh, whole staff, engineering staff of Region 6. And uh, we have been informed also yesterday by Undersecretary Bernardo that uh, the work will soon start by first week of July. They've already identified their uh, contractors. Money has been released already to the region. And this will be divided into four sections. Uh, at 1.2 kilometer per section, per contractor. And so if this can be done uh, in a 24-hour, 24-7 basis, uh, the DPWH has given themselves uh, two to three months to finish this. And uh, based on our timelines, uh, by two months, in the, by the end of two months, almost 80% will be completed already. As to the other issues of relocation. Uh, Before we go into that, uh, Madam Chair, just, just yes. to this point of the road widening. I read in the papers that the private sector refuses to fully cooperate in that they demolish the first floor, but they do not give vertical clearance. Is that true? Uh, th that is uh, correct, Mr. So <laughs> um, uh, Senator. That is that uh, correct? This, so th that's this was uh, taken up yesterday, uh -huh. and out of the... We... we uh, established that there are 39 structures still occupying the upper yes, areas. No, no it's vertical it's clearance. So that it's complying uh, on the lower ground, yes. but on the vertical clearance, they're yes. not complying. So, what are we do? That will also be demolished. Uh -huh. That will also be demolished uh, because that is the requirement of DPWH. Yes. No, <laughs> yes. uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, yesterday, po, uh, Secretary Simato gave an order to DNR to identify the obstructions, yung full limit. Mamarkahan po muna namin and then force, by force po siguro, if uh, they will not uh, comply, we will do the demolition. Yung ginagawa ko yun sa Iloilo eh. <laughs> <laughs> yung may mga vertical, <laughs> you know, they do re right now we're in the process of negotiating uh, for the removal of, uh, of a building that extended, cantilevered into, yan, alam ni director yan, no? <laughs> Oh, it's a hotel. Huh? Oh. Anyway, so that's one. The other thing is, the other problem that you face in the DPWH when you widen the road is that the distribution post, when you widen the road, gets into the middle of the road. I was reading in the papers that the electric cooperative would need funding and assistance to put the post in the proper place so that we can widen the road. If we widen the road with the post in the center, you'll have a parking space, not a road. What I are think, we doing? Uh, Senator Drilon, I think the DPWH will pay for that. Kasi misan yung, yes, oh. yung electrical ko, yeah, yeah, walang pera. pera. Oh, oh, pera. Pag Meralco, they require Meralco to do it. Yeah. But pag electric co-op, uh, tinutulungan yeah, so, na nila electric oh, co-op. Sila that, na naglilipa. Will, is that what you will do? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm Sir Senator. Uh, we have committed po to fund uh, approximately 93 million for that purpose. Relocating the Akelco posts to the proper places para to give way for the road widening. 
But that's available. Mm. That's available for that's uh, a problem, huh? You go around the country, you are building DPWH, and take this opportunity to address this, you are building parking lots rather than widened roads. Why? Because the electric posts are now in the middle of the widened road because the cooperatives either refuse to transfer them or for whatever reason. Oh, so, so this is being uh, addressed. Yes, uh, that's already addressed po and uh, we already requested the BM mm -hmm. and uh, eventually they will release po the 93 million. But now, Akel ko po, with even uh, without uh, the release of the funds, they are doing it naman po. They are uh, relocating na po their uh, posts to the sides, to the sides, to the edge of the 12-meter road right of way. 12 meters po. 12, okay. 12 including the sidewalk. Uh, yes. yes po. Yes, yes. So That's the only possible. open space, seven? Uh, Approximately six meters po yung road, so that <coughs> that leaves us six oh. meters, no, six meters long. And then two meters of, of that side of no. the roads. No, no, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We're private. They will not buy from us pag six meters. <laughs> oh no, ilang metro si? Ah, uh, tatlong met, tigatlong metro po yung roadway at tigatlong mm. metro. And po then halos. the sidewalk, <coughs> two meters One each. Po. Two ano? meters po. May, may so ten. Eh, nasaan yung... 12 po, 12 po, 12 po. Three, uh, 6 meters po yung roadway, tapos 63 meters po yung roadway. Ah, road laki ng sidewalk. Malaki yung sidewalk. Uh, Ba't laki ng sidewalk? Or is that for tricycles? Uh, pwede pong uh, bike lane, tsaka po jogging, uh, jogging oh, path. Okay. Or, uh, po. Eh, baka mamaya lagyan ng tindahan yun. Lalagyan. Kasi yung mga sidewalk, nilalagyan ng tindahan. <coughs> oh. uh, meron din po kaming plano ng mga street lights mm -hmm. for that purpose. Yung po sidewalk na yun. Okay. Sa edge din po. So uh, you have Chair? some more ano, yes, report? Yes, uh, 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 to, to, to the 12 meter uh, wide roadway, Senator, if we widen it some more, no building will be left <laughs> 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 along that, that highway. <laughs> The DPWH has a very, uh, very good plan for this, uh, complete with sidewalk, bike lane, uh, electric lights, uh, and storm drainage, just like uh, the Iloilo experience, Senator. We're always uh, envious about what you've done to Iloilo. <laughs> so, uh, on the relocation, ma'am, on the issue of the demolitions, uh, we've already identified uh, an area in the mainland of uh, Malay wherein all the illegal or informal settlers on the wetlands will be transferred and we're doing the demolition now in uh, in uh, cooperation with the LGO. Yes, yes. Uh, the idea is uh, to decongest the island with the workers and encourage the workers in Boracay to stay in the mainland okay. and not to add to any more the the burden of the island mm -hmm. and uh, we're very confident that we can do this in the next two to three months ma'am okay. so uh, that is our target uh, with the dnr as lead madam chair that's a very good plan huh? in other words all the workers will stay should in be staying in malay yes malay. not in boracay not in boracay that's a good plan how can how well can we implement that in other words there are no resi workers residents in Boracay, but all in Malay, and we provide uh, uh, sufficient transport. Uh, yes, yes. How, how, how the idea is uh, to encourage our hotel owners to build staff houses in the mainland so that their staff can now stay in the mainland. For the workers, uh, the construction workers, we will not allow any more contractors of uh, buildings to allow their construction workers to stay in the island. We will, uh, pu uh, we will uh, encourage them or co uh, uh, compel them to move their workers or st other workers to the mainland. Yeah, just go for the day. That is why uh, we're now uh, improving our two port systems, uh, Katiklan and Kagban. Uh, we will... Uh, we're asking the OTR to provide us with funds to do a uh, improvement of the two ports 
to make it into an all-weather port with uh, corresponding breakwater so that during the Habagat season, Senator, when it is very hard to cross, we can use the two, por two ports so that the workers uh, can cross at any time of the day, any time of the night, and provide them with subsidies, hopefully, so that the transportation can be affordable. So that is the uh, long-term uh, uh, top plan that we are uh, trying to implement in the island. Okay, thank you, ma'am, madam. Thank you, Governor. Would the mayor of Malay would want to say something? Well, uh, please, at the uh, afternoon, na pata tayo. Afternoon, na the Senate of the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, I'm your sister in Kawaling. Humbly uh, represent local government unit of Malay before this hearing, be, before this committee hearing. In behalf of the people of Malay, we are in full support and total cooperation of the initiative of our uh, president. Rodrigo Roa Duterte to rehabilitate Boracay. We are grateful that we are recognized by the committee to possibly uh, contribute to the much needed findings of facts in aid of legislation. So yan lang po ang mapayabot ko dito sa sa ano ito and uh, we are very much thankful to the committee chairman or the committee itself to uh, for inviting us here in this uh, legislature. Maraming salamat po as uh, Mayor of Malay. And then we want to recognize Greenpeace and Oceana. They want to say something in that order. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is also in relation, isang comment lang in relation to the proposed uh, Boracay Development Authority or Council. Uh, we are supportive of that move. But at the same time, we, Greenpeace would like to reiterate our position that uh, the problem in Boracay did not happen naman overnight. And we also would like to identify na kung pwede, isama sa deliverables later, to identify kung sino yung mga ac accountable na mga personalities na nagbibigay ng mga permits sa mga local establishments so that we'll be able to establish accountability and to make sure that these people will not be able to uh, ma, ma admit na later sa any other governmental body or management body. For example, di ba, uh, for permits for buildings, yung mga sewer systems, there are names and people behind giving these permits. And we would like that this will be uh, included sa report para po, uh, so that we'll be able to prevent. Um, I think important ito sa, sa context ng governance and accountability for what is happening right now in Boracay. And we also would like to Congratulate na it's moving forward at China and other countries, uh, in other parts of countries as well, like in Cebu, in the Visayas, and other parts of Mindanao. So, accountability, kasi the, the permits, because they have been conniving, conspiring against the people of uh, in that island and the environment, and I think the impunity should not be directed at these people, but the people who gave out permits at the local level and the national level. Thank you so much. Uh, Oshana. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for this opportunity, Madam Chair, to uh, to speak out uh, in behalf of Oshana and in my personal capacity, I was a teacher of uh, local government and environmental law at the University of Cebu. Um, environmental protection is a devolved service to local government units. That's why we they have the era the internal revenue allotment which they should have they should allocate for environment but we see that there's they're not taking ownership except for some very exemplary local chief executives that we have so studying our environmental laws there's always that provision that the local government units act as the um, front line uh, in terms of delivery of service they are the front liners Unfortunately, and we hope we have the representative from the Department of Environment Loco and Local Government, uh, USEC Densing, um, there are mechanisms for uh, stronger mechanisms for exercising supervisory power over local government units and uh, supervising entities such as provinces and um, may, uh, cities and municipalities over barangays. 
because this is really very important because without such measures or mechanisms for accountability, we will not solve this problem. And we also need to invite the participation of our stakeholders. Many exemplary mayors, uh, local governments are doing very well because there is complete participation of citizens, NGOs, POs. There is close collaboration, coordination between local government units and national government agencies. This is what is lacking and we might solve the problem in Boracay temporarily, but what is the assurance that our goal of having clean waters, pristine marine areas will be sustained? So uh, our, our proposal, and we have, this, we have learned this through uh, what, 16 years of environmental advocacy, um, there should be a mechanism for accountability, mechanism system of rewards and incentives. Uh, and I am happy that the DILG is coming up with a scorecard on compliance of fisheries laws, for example. And this will, those who are uh, doing their mandates will be given recognition, but those who are not, will be subjected to accountability and citizens can very well partner with government agencies we have our remedies we can file citizen suit to ensure performance of the mandate so it's really high time to let go of the sense of entitlement that some authorities seem to have and really let's work together to collaborate because after all we only have one philippines one planet one ocean Thank you, salamat. From, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you from Oshana. Uh, we have to close our hearing because I have to, uh, I have to catch a plane going to Iloilo City. But uh, anyway, uh, those who have uh, want to say something, uh, can you, you put it in writing it. and uh, and uh, we will have we will consider it. We're going to have what what do you want to say? Um, just a quick statement, Madam Chair. Considering the statement from Oceana and Greenpeace regarding accountability, we are the DOJ uh, together with the uh, NBI is humbly requesting the cooperation of the LGO Malay for the uh, submission of the documents we are requiring them for the filing of criminal cases, so that uh, we will. Uh, uh, answer the call for accountability. So we will, the DOJ uh, through the NDA. Make sure you do that because uh, we have bad experience with DOJ. We have been uh, holding hearing here with regards to the cartel and the smuggling. You haven't filed any case uh, against them. So new management, but yes. make sure that you're going to do your job because <laughs> We're losing hope. We're losing hope. Rest okay. assured, uh, Madam okay. Chair, we will Sige. do our best with the new Secretary okay. Guevara. Okay. Uh, since uh, we're running out of time, we I have to catch a plane. So we intend to conduct monthly hearing to monitor the progress of rehabilitation. I think it will be a good idea so that there will be more pressure to the agencies to accomplish things month by month because we have uh, finished two months of the six months we only have four months to go so we have to do better in the meantime the committee will conduct the technical working group meetings to tackle the bill in the creation of boracay island authority as filed by Senator Drillon. So we'll go on technical working group for that Boracay Authority. So our, our monthly hearing will be to update us on rehabilitation, but at the same time, we will have a technical working group. So by the time you finish with Boracay, we have passed the law on how to manage Boracay. Thank you very much, and thank you for everybody, to everybody for coming. <laughs>